two. What's up, everybody? It's HG Podcast. Friday, June 10th. We have a special episode here today on this After Dark. We're, of course, joined by my wife, Hila, who we love so well. And, uh, a, and a, a distinguished guest is with us here today, Chelsea Manning. Um, thank you for joining us. Thank you. I'm very, you know, very interested in your story and everything you've done. And I look forward to having a, uh, talking about a lot of stuff with you. So thanks for being here. Nice. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, is it true? So let me just ba lay some groundwork here. So if, if there's anybody who doesn't know who you are, who's watching, um, basically you are a United States government whistleblower. You blew the whistle on the military, the government, and it was the biggest leak of military documents ever, right? Almost a million documents or over a million documents? I was 750,000. 750,000. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, well, it was, you know, a huge story all through. I mean, it still is, right? But, like, the past decades, it's been uh, very present in uh, yeah. media. Yeah, it's gotten a bit of attention. You faced the wrath of, of two presidents. <laughs> maybe uh, more so one than the other. Yeah, two, two, two presidents, technically three, because one was vice president at the time. So, But Trump obviously has not had not kind things to say about you. Trump hasn't had kind things to say about me, no. Or anyone, really. I mean, yeah. who does he speak A lot of government people. Yeah. Hillary Clinton. even hates his own kid, so don't feel too bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, Obama. yeah. I don't really care. I don't really care. <laughs> and um, pardoned by Obama after seven years. Well, commuted. Commuted, commuted. commuted by, oh, by Obama after seven years. Yeah. And there's just so much to talk about. I really want to... Uh, Really want to start from the beginning, but actually, before I get started from the beginning, it is Friday, so we have to say hello to uh, this is Gabe. <laughs> He's known as White Claw Gabe. He calls in every Friday. Yep. He's a local celebrity around here. Gabe, how's it Hi, going? Hi, Gabe. <laughs> it's great, motherfucker. Fuck me. Fuck me. Okay, fuck. <laughs> it's Friday, baby. Ow! Friday. Ooh, I'm chugging a soda. Oh, you got a root beer? No White Claws yeah. yet? Bart's the best, motherfucker. Okay. And the weekend, motherfucker. Let's Ow! fucking go. Ow! He loves Friday. He loves the weekend. Indeed. Who doesn't? <laughs> What's going on with the Bark's root beer? You're not... Oh, shit. He's chugging it. What? Oh, my no, God. Oh, we got a root beer chug <laughs> from Gabe. No way, dude. You are going to be so fucked up this Friday. He's dripping. <laughs> that Whoa! Oh, my God. He's got to get the drips in. Wow, how was that? No, oh, no, 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 not a second one, Gabe, don't do it. Oh my God. Someone handed Gabe another Barks root beer. Oh, he's struggling from off screen. Who is that mysterious hand? Yeah, dude, someone's mis Gabe is just, wow, he is going off this Friday. Two Barks root beer chugs, man, that is legendary. That counts. Yeah. That one's clean, clean. You know, people talk about the Sprite Challenge. What is that? Gabe just... Is there a third <laughs> one, Gabe? <laughs> yeah, don't do it. <clears throat> Not worth it, Gabe. Don't do a third one. Oh, what? wow. Wow, okay. <laughs> oh, my wow. God. Ooh, feels Ooh. good. Fuck. Fuck, baby. How's your stomach Ooh. feeling after that? My <laughs> dad is dead. Ooh, weak as for soda. <laughs> Wow, wow, wow. That was, that was impressive, buddy. Fuck, baby. Ow. <laughs> All right, Gabe. Well, you have a great weekend, okay? Uh -oh. <laughs> I got to talk to my guest, but thanks for checking in. Thank you. That was quite a show. Fuck, baby. All right, you have a great weekend. Love you, dude. All right. Motherfucker. Hey, fuck, fuck yeah. baby, fuck. <laughs> ow, ow, ow. Gabe, uh, White Claw Gabe, everyone. That was an unexpected treat. <laughs> yeah. Chugging two bark root beers. Yeah. yeah. The first one didn't count, that's why. Because there was a drip? Yeah. That mm -hmm. they had to do a mulligan? Yep. And you are you are strict. I am strict. It's just put, you know, it's like in the military. You push it out, very <laughs> yeah, strict. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah. You, get, you, you get to into the 41 club where you don't, where you don't, don't pass uh, your airborne test because... 
you only reach 42. You, you you're supposed to, to reach 42 as a minimum. Yeah. And then the, the instructor or whoever is measuring you just goes 41, 41, oh, they, 41. Oh, yeah. Doesn't oh. count. Military. Oh, shit. Damn. <laughs> Assholes. Well, let's start, let's start from the beginning, okay? Right. <laughs> so, Chelsea, you were, where were you born? Uh, so I was born in uh, Mercy Hospital in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, if you want to get technical. Sure. So I was born in the Midwest. Yeah. Uh, I grew up mostly in the Midwest until I was about 11 or 12. Um, I think it was 11 whenever I moved out with my mother. Cause my, I, so I have a, my father's American. He was in the Navy, and he, li he lived out in the U.K. Um, on his Navy tour uh, there and married my mother came back, they came back to the States. Uh, she got na naturalized here, mm. um, lived here for, uh, well, lived, lived here until I was basically born with my sister. Uh, and, uh, yeah, was like basically spent, uh, the first 11 or 12 years of my life, uh, living with her and my sister and my father until my parents divorced. My sister being 11 years older, moved out of the house and, uh, I moved, uh, my, my mother gained custody of me and I moved out in the UK, uh, and went mm -hmm. to school and secondary school in, Southwest Wales. <laughs> so you're no. okay. So so your your dad is English or half? No, or no, my mom my mother's English. my mother's my mother's so you, Welsh. Okay, yeah. so you moved out to to the UK. I did. Interesting. And, and then uh, I, and then I came back to the states after um, after a few years. I came back and so you, moved in with my father again. You're mm -hmm. a dual citizen. Uh, I am. Yes. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. That used to get you into EU. It doesn't anymore. No, it doesn't get. Uh, and that, I, I apparently Such a gotta, bird. I apparently got to apply for Irish citizenship now. Oh, that'll that'll get you <laughs> yeah. in. That'll get me around. A little little curveball thrown. So at the... how was so basically what was it like? Kind of your your dad was a military man. That's kind of interesting because obviously you ended up going into the military. Is, did yeah. that have? But he was Navy. Was, he was a Navy guy. You yeah. were an Army guy. Yeah. There's a rivalry there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, basically. Basically, after after um, after my parent after I moved back with my father, um, he he remarried, and uh, I was uh, I was a little um, I was a little different as a as a kid, right? Because I was like living as li living as this sort of this uh, this like gender nonconforming, you know, uh, twinkish boy mm -hmm. boy mode kind of trans. You know, like I was I like I I didn't really know that I was trans. Like I kind of knew that something was going on, but I was just like you know goth, rebellious, sure. or whatever. Um, she did not like me, and so uh, after I turned 18, and he was no longer uh, liable, you know, to, to have legally to, to, to hold me, I be, she basically told him to kick me out of the house. So. Wow. And, and I lived uh, houseless in basically the Midwest, and landed in Chicago for uh, almost a year. Is your dad kind of a traditional guy? Like, were they yeah. accepting of the whole I, well, I think, gender confusion? I think I think my father's not so much. Um, uh, on the on on the the uh, I, I would say that my father uh, wasn't homophobic, but he was definitely like on the transphobic spectrum. So you know. just probably like. But you know, he's also like this individualist guy who's just like ah oh, right, you know, like ah oh, like you know like a macho. Yeah, he's just like uh, very uh, very much your sort of typical like wh uh, white upper upper middle class yeah. midwestern male. Being, being trans is just like such a foreign concept yeah, to exactly. him, probably. So, you know, I, did, I wasn't exactly accepted, but, you know, I, um, I, I did try, you know. So my, I moved in with my aunt uh, in Maryland for, uh, you know, after, after being houseless in Chicago, which I just want to mention real fast, you know, being out in L.A. It's just like the house. The well, yeah. I, I'm, homelessness. That sounds really an rough. Here. And mm -hmm. Chicago is a cold port. Like, it, L.A. is, like, nice, you know, but Chicago has yeah, brutal weather. Brutal. Yeah. Yeah. So your your um your stepmom, was she? What was the issue? Was it like a transphobic, a homophobic? Yeah, thing? I think so. I mean, she was definitely homophobic. Um, Traditional, so, like Christian. Lady? Oh, very much so. Okay. Um, although the irony is that they divorced like a couple years later. Oh, so. she's going to hell <laughs> yeah. for that. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> See you in hell. Yeah. So you know. Uh, so yeah, ba ba basically, um, you know, didn't have a lot of family support. Uh, you, you know as I was coming out, um, but I, I moved in with my aunt, uh, my, my father's, uh, my father's sister, uh, in Maryland. And, uh, while I was there, I was, you know, sort of juggling three jobs, trying to pay for bills, mm. and, you know, trying to find my own place. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, it was like summer, summer 2006. 
uh, into like summer 2007, so about this year time frame that I was working at Starbucks. I was working at I worked at Abercrombie and Fitch. For a <laughs> wow. Uh, oh. I uh, you got I, I was, in, col yeah, I was they... in college too. Like so, basically, it was okay. like a hundred hour week, a yeah. uh, hundred hour weeks of just doing constant stuff in this churn. And while this is all going on, the Iraq War is like the main thing. Like right. it's like the main like it's the dinner table discussion. It's the conversation that everybody's having. You right. know, the, you had the the household names of George W. Bush. Donald Rumsfeld, um, then Robert Gates, you know, and the surge, sort of all of this stuff happening in the background um, while I'm also just sort of like struggling to figure out who I am, where I fit in the world, how I, you know, wh where, where do I go, where, where do I land, mm -hmm, essentially, mm -hmm. um, in, you know, going, uh, going forward w with my life and, you know, fitting in. And, uh, and I started, to I, I was trying to reconnect with my father in, in this time. And he kept on pushing me to go, you know, into the uh, go into the Navy or the Air Force. I see. And of course, me being a rebellious, <laughs> uh, pain in the ass, uh, you know, kid, I, I, I enlisted in the Army. Uh, and I also knew that, you know, this troop surge was going on, so the Army was where, you know, people were needed. So you know, I enlisted in the Army. So actually, before I get too deep into that, I want to go back to. So you were living in Chicago. You were homeless in Chicago. Yes. And for how long did you live in Chicago? Um, I'm, I've, I haven't, I haven't really done the math on it, but you know, several months. So. so and were you living on the street, like street? Uh, street I or? had, a, I, I borrowed uh, my father's pickup truck. Okay. So I was in a Nissan. I was in a red 1992 Nissan hard body pickup and, truck. And was it like a winter thing or a summer? Thankfully, thing? the winter hadn't hit. Okay. But there were cold nights. Yeah, yeah. But the worst was the hot days in right. that time frame. So what did you do kind of, what were you doing during that time? You were, you ran, kind of got kicked out of your house by your stepmom. Yeah. And then why did you decide to go to Chicago? Um, well, I, it felt the safest. Um, cause I had tried a couple of different cities. Um, I had been, I had dealt with sort of town, like small town sheriffs, Tulsa police department, you know, St. Louis police department. I had dealt with sort of like being a houseless person, not being able to find a place to sleep. Mm. Uh, and basically being harassed by cops all the time. You know? So when you say safest, you mean that like Chicago has the most. I, I wasn't for for yeah. That kind they didn't of thing? they didn't fuck with me. Like okay, I, I, I could see. sleep somewhere, and you know I could sleep in my truck and not be bothered for most nights. I mm. see. I see. Um, and so after living there for a couple months, you. Basically well, I, I I do want to say what I was doing. Uh, I, yes. I, I I had a job at the guitar center. Okay. <laughs> do you play? I was at the I, w I was in pro audio, so I was uh, that's, that's my DJ. Hell yeah, dude! I was I, my uh, my one of my side gigs is uh, DJing. Oh right, I, so are you are you getting back into DJing at all? The people are wondering. Yeah, I uh, I I got my uh, I got my ex DJ, so um I'm, and I'm working on my set, so at some point going to. So Surprise when, someone somewhere yeah. at some club with the So when you set. DJ, are you mixing new things or are you just playing? I'm sticking to I'm sticking to a playlist right now. Yeah. Um but uh it's not gonna be completely pre programmed, but you know, like I'm I'm playing around with sort of um, you know, doing live production um pads and additional like things with, with uh with synthesizers that I can attach to it, you know, to sort of mix it up and do sort of bootlegs. But interesting. I mean that was what I did in like mid or, you know, later that uh, when I was living the, whenever I was living in um, Maryland, uh, I went and I did the DC club scene and you know played the uh, oh, played wow. a couple sets. Uh, that's cool. Mostly like mostly to like University of Maryland and Georgetown students. That's so. a that's <laughs> not a bad gig though. No. They pay you? Oh yeah, I got paid, but you know I, it wasn't enough to like pay the bills. Yeah, so it was, was semi professional at best. So when you're living in Chicago, how do you like shower and kind of just take care of yourself and all that kind of stuff? If you're living out of your car, truck stop. <laughs> truck stops. Yeah, because I, I had a truck, so I'd spend an enormous amount of gas money driving out to a truck stop. Right. And, uh, using a truck stop, uh, like shower, like uh. I forget, what is it? The Flying J. They usually have showers, or they had them back then. So. They still do. Dan, 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 you showered at the Flying J <laughs> uh, on a road trip or two. Yeah. Uh, That's interesting. I've never. I didn't even know they had showers at trucks. I didn't yep. either. Do you pay, or is it just open? Should, uh, if I recall it being open, so um, I'm is not. Is it sure. private? I mean, they have a private sort of. stall. It's so, yeah. Is it kind of shady? Like yeah, it's like a pool. Mm. Wow. That's very progressive <laughs> for this country. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, I'm surprised. It wasn't the best, but it was yeah. certainly, it was, you know, it was certainly, uh, 
the ability to have some amount of hygiene. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Or, or you know, uh, the other thing was just sort of like, uh, and I talk about more more about this in the, my book, sort of survival strategies in sort of mm -hmm. city, like you know, surviving, you know, finding food. This is what apparently shelter. it looks like. That's that looks nice. Damn, that, that's a, I don't remember that's looking. Nice one, right? I don't remember that looking like that. <laughs> yeah, that looks like a nice gym. <laughs> that's that's. <laughs> <laughs> How could you keep it that clean at a public truck stop? Yeah, there's no there's way. No way. <laughs> it's got a it's got like a rug. <laughs> you know that'd be rug. covered it's in a piss. towel. It's a tiny towel. <laughs> well, I guess it's a make it's one it's in between. Let's uh, let's, let's it. go. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so okay, so you're right so you're living in uh, Chicago. So what makes you decide you're gonna move to Maryland? So my aunt tracked me down. I don't know how. Um, Interesting. You've been trying to try work out work out exactly what happened, but my aunt. Your tracked dad's me. Uh, sister. My or? dad's sister, yeah. who lives in this, you know, she she says it's a oh, she says it's a nice house and it's an okay house, but it's, it's a big, beautiful it's house. An, it's a it's a lovely house in Maryland. Good for her. <laughs> yeah. Um. And so yeah, so she had a bit of space for me, and I, I crashed there. For so how did she track you down though? Cause you, I don't know. Uh, I, you know, there's been a dis the, when we were sort of doing research for the book. You know, it was mm. uh, we were trying to figure out piece it piece it together. Cause I just remember like on my phone being on my phone one day. Cause I I had a f I, things that I had were a cell phone, I had a laptop. I had, uh, and I could do Wi-Fi at some places, and I had, uh, and I had my truck. So, I see. Um, you know, and I and I tried to get a, a like a like a post office box situation as well. I see. And uh, so I was, you know, I was trying to establish myself. I was actually looking, for, you know, looking to get an apartment in, uh, like like um, northern Chicago. Uh, you know, the I'm a Cubs fan, so mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm just sticking to northern Chicago. Um, but yeah, I wanted to stay. Uh, I wanted to sort of settle down there. And my aunt called me and just rang me on the phone, and mm. I was just like, "She oh, said, hi. hey, come live with me.' I'll yeah, you I was out like, well, I don't own. have money.' And she's like, "Well, I'll send you money.' And she sent me wow. enough gas money to That's drive out. very sweet. Yeah, lifesaver. Was she close? Were you close with her before? Absolutely, that? we're still yeah, close. Yeah, yeah, that's sweet. God that's bless. Sweet. God bless. Yeah, my aunt is a uh, man is that's an amazing. incredible is an incredible and very generous person. Wow, that's touching. That's really nice to hear. Yeah. So you moved down into Maryland with your, with your aunt, and then how long are you living there for? Uh, almost a year, um, before I enlisted in the military. So what? My aunt was not happy about. Right. <laughs> Is she kind of more liberal version of like your dad? Yeah. More progressive. Definitely. Hates the military. Yeah. She was a she was a John Edwards uh, like supporter, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. a John Kerry supporter, uh, and then uh, Obama, like, uh, I think she was a Clinton and then Obama supporter in 2008, okay. so. She's a liberal she's, down the line. Yeah, she's definitely very, you know, centrist, democratic. Got it. Is your dad kind of a Trump guy? Is that what where his politics fall? I don't know. I haven't talked to my dad in over a decade, so okay. I don't know. Okay, interesting. Uh, I think the last time I spoke to my dad was in 2010, so. That's interesting. I was curious how he was... I don't know. I let my I, I, my sister's the buffer. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I let my sister. Well, we'll get we'll get to that. We have a long way to cover. Yeah. <laughs> so you live with your aunt. You were still in touch with your dad at the time. Iraq's going on, and yep. you said now you said I wanted to join the army because that's where they needed people. Were Were you fulfilling some kind of patriotic duty? Did, did you I think feel? so. I yeah. you know um, I didn't have strong political. I, I didn't have a lot of political underpinnings mm -hmm. um, at that age. Uh, I, I, I often like to joke that uh, in 2007, my politics consisted of uh, leave Britney alone. <laughs> okay. And they and you know what's interesting about the leave That's Britney alone? Uh, early. Age well. They were right. Yeah. You guys were right. We all made fun of you, and you guys were right, goddammit. Yeah, so that was the extent of my politics <laughs> okay. in 2007. How uh, old were you when you enlisted in the army? I was 18. Oh. I think it was, no, it was 19. I was 19, because I had 2007, so. Was it kind of just the typical military trap where you're like, I don't know what to do, and the military sounds like a good place to go? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. You know, uh, and and you know the uh, it was everywhere. Like you know, the ads were constant. Uh, mm. The army strong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was really attractive for somebody sort of you know needing to find you know because like I felt lost at you know at 19 years old. I had been houseless. Um, I was struggling with all these different things, um, and I just really didn't ha didn't really have a sense of like where I fit in the world. And mm. and then you know I was like struggling with being. I, I was I figured out by the time I was like 19 that I, that 
you know, like, hey, like maybe I need to like seek hormones or get mm-hmm. some kind of, you know, uh, therapy or, or something like that. And, uh, and, you know, my father was just pushing me to man up. Like, mm-hmm. you, and, I, and I did, at, you know, I did at that age still want to like get my, you know, get my family's favor back, you know, so. So by the time you enlisted, were you kind of, did you, you were somewhat aware that you were trans? I, I, um, I, I knew I was gay because I was definitely. You were living as a gay I, man at I the time, was, right? Yeah, I was, yeah. Uh, I was in the D.C., uh, I was in the Chicago and then the D.C. gay scene. Uh, quite were a bit. you closeted, though, to your family at that time or you were out? Uh, I mean, I didn't exactly come out, but uh, I mean, I wasn't hiding it, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cut, yeah. You know, Me coming home with like a rainbow belt, you know, okay, like, okay, on Pride okay. Weekend is not, it. not, yeah. not hiding. <laughs> okay. So, enrolling in the military, were you somewhat afraid because you're living as a gay man and you think you might be trans? Were you afraid of what it would be like to live in the military with that identity? No, no. no. I, I had no idea what the real consequences of that I were. I see. I see. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I you know, so I went to basic training and uh, I enlisted as an analyst. So I became an intelligence analyst and I worked in that uh, in sort of. You know, it's funny. Um, I became uh, I became an intelligence analyst because I didn't want to get like because like I work with computers and I have a background I've always had a computer in my hand mm-hmm, like, since, mm-hmm. since I was like seven years old I had like, I've had this you know like rig in my apart in my in my bedroom right my own computer which you know like I like being like seven or eight years old having a having a computer with internet access it's like, like everything in the mid nineties was just like you know something that most people didn't have access mm-hmm. to um, and. Uh, and yeah, so I've always, you know, I, I have an affinity with computers, and I've always worked with computers. But actually, I actually wanted to be in a, be in a role that was more like about geopolitics, sort of thinking about things, tactics, strategy, understanding of people, um, and uh, sort of uh, the, the the military has this phrase, human terrain, understanding the human terrain, especially mm. in counterinsurgency operations. Mm. Um, and uh, and that's what I wanted to do, and I wanted to get into that. And then the first thing I do whenever I finish training, they they hand me over this gigantic data science rig, which is, you know, a computer system and databases. And I'm just like, oh, no. Why? <laughs> Why were you like, oh, no? Because I was like, oh, I'm going to get in trouble. Because <laughs> you knew you were going to misuse the deck? <laughs> I mean, well, you can't help it, right? You know? Was it like a supercomputer at the time? Just like a super gnarly? I mean, it was an de- 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 Alienware. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying, yeah, well, so, so you enlist you do how was boot camp for you i mean just right out the gate because how long i think basic it? training i had a, yeah, i had long? nervous i had like some a nerve injury on my right arm and left foot mm-hmm. um i talk about it more in my book uh you know there's the plug right there hey guys there's a book coming out for sure <laughs> <laughs> book is coming out something to look forward to towards yep. the end of the year uh, right? working on the title i think it's read i think it's read me i think that's gonna be the title read me yeah I it's think, a command yeah <laughs> yeah it's also like it's, it's an important thing because there's like a file in the mm. story that's about read double me. yeah double so me. Love that. uh but yeah like uh yeah so basically uh i you know, I, I I was I was working with computers and doing data science, and um, and that was my role, and that was what I did. Um, did they I did ask this, you what kind of role do you want, or did it yes. just happen? Yes. So like that? you get to pick your military occupational spe- specialty okay. or MOS um, before you enlist in the army. Mm-hmm. It's not the same with other services. I don't know if it's changed or anything, but at the time, the army was where you went to sign up and know the role that you were going to be put in. Mm. That's interesting. Can you just sign up for whatever you want, or do you, do you have to take some aptitude test? Yeah, I took an aptitude test and I slam dunked it. Apparently, (laughs) you're a smarty for the army. I mean, apparently, like I, I don't know. I and I haven't looked at it, but basically, I was like, I want to be, I want to do this, and like you have to pass this test. I'm like, okay, like did I pass? And like, yes. (laughs) Okay, okay, because I would assume that analyst is one of the more probably. Yeah, I I remember. I remember the only one that had. I I think that one, one of the ones that had more aptitude was like was like satellite communication specialist. Wow, very specific. Yeah. Yeah, but so the analyst basically is someone. It's an it's in a part of the intelligence branch, right? Yeah, it's the by definition. Yeah, and you crunch basically data to. We Google. We, we you did, Google shit. Yeah, is that we, right? Well, well, it's it's you know we do what Google does, which is just collect data and do analysis, right? So you get a bunch of data from the military, and basically they say, let let me just do math. <laughs> oh, it's math. Yeah, it's math. Can you give me an example? All right, now we're getting to machine learning, which is my specialty. Okay. So, uh, there is a number of different me- means and methods in uh, in data science. 
um, one of which was, was extremely popular at the time because this is this is before you know you had your uh, you had your Nvidia graphics card in your machine, mm -hmm. uh, and you could uh, do neural networks or any of the kind of, kind of more advanced machine learning at the time. Um, you can use Bayesian statistics, which you know still requires a lot of uh, number crunching, and uh, it it'll it uses a specific set of addition and in, addition instructions on something that is predictable, and it allows you to take a historical data set and move it forward into the future hmm. and look at what's possible in the future mm. through a certain amount of through a certain amount of time. So, but like, what kind of stuff would you would you put in there? Or like, I'm it just... can be anything. I mean, you know, uh, you, if, you know, stock tips. You want to put stock, you know, you want to put the stock market in into there. Uh, that's how the early, the earliest uh, stock the stock market mo models were, were. But I mean, like in any rack, what was like the most common thing that you would analyze? like? How does it? Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, well, I mean, I can't get into the the specific data, but um, generally, it's you know, it's people, places, locations, okay. times, mm. like you know, like certain certain criteria. You just try to find patterns. Yeah. Is, there's pattern now na pattern analysis. Okay, mm. okay, I see. But um, you know, and now, now I do now I do this for a living. It's still, yeah, <laughs> still okay. doing the same thing. <laughs> it seems like so. Did you? It sounds like you got an extensive education in the army. Is that uh, accurate? Because it's well, I mean, like I went to school in the UK, which helps. Yeah. Mm. So you already had been to college. <laughs> um, no, I well, I essentially the the last two years of school in the UK sixth form. Are the equivalent to the first two years of, of U.S. college education. So. Okay, so you had and then I had an, a, a third year, and then I had a third year. So I don't have a degree, but I have a lot of college credits. Got it. So, um, you know, uh, and now I don't need to don't need to bother. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you went to boot camp. You sustained some kind of injuries. Uh, yeah, some kind of nerve injury. I still don't know what it is to this day. I've had I've had I've had it looked at and whatever, and um, you know. Uh, it didn't disqualify me from trying again. So I just had issues with sort of the first few weeks of basic training. So okay. they, they, held, they held me back for a few weeks. Okay. Um, and then I waited until I healed up and got a good sign off, good to go. And I went back and no, no, no problems. The second how time. was the basic, how was boot camp for you? Uh, I mean, it's so long ago, right? Um, I think, you know, I mean, obviously the first, the first few weeks were, were tough because I was like, I was like, ah. My 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 arm's not working. I can't do a push up, right? right. You know, it's just like you know, you can't do a push up. And you're in basic training, like that's kind of the point of basic training. Uh, but yeah, once I got once I got and actually saw like a doctor was like, yeah, there's an issue here. Like we need to like look at, into it. Um, then uh, then it, then it was smooth sailing for me. I basically fit in. And did you find camaraderie there amongst the, the I did. guys? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, I think I think one of the most fascinating things about sort of indoctrination to the military is. Um, you know, you you get because I I wasn't from you know like my father was in the navy, but like I didn't really know much about the military. But once I got in, one, once I was sort of brought into uh, the military culture uh, and started to understand it, I've always felt sort of um, I've, I I find that in institutional environments now, and this this goes with prison as well, and jails and, and jails and being houseless as well. I find that in, in institutional environments, I find that I bond with people hmm. very quickly, mm -hmm. and I sort of start to learn sort of the, you know, at rules, expectations, roles that you, you know, that you sort of fit in, um, in these kinds of environments, um, you know, sometimes harsh environments. And, uh, and yeah, you know, I, I find, I make friends very quickly. I make connections very quickly. I, I, I develop trust and rapport with people very mm -hmm. quickly. So yeah, I, I, you know, I felt throughout the, my time in the military, I felt, you know, close to people. I, I can relate to that. I did too. Yeah. Cause I did the army in Israel and, um, in boot camp, I remember like getting a really close group of friends. Yeah, you're and around you're around each you other just, 12, 14 hours a day. And it's like so. people who maybe in outside of it you would never become friends, but when you're put in that situation, you kind of like develop that bond. Yeah, it's a it's a bond that's hard to describe. You yeah, know, like a, a it, you know sort of a camaraderie mm -hmm. or a yeah. kinship. I guess yeah. the reason I ask is because you were living as a gay man. I wasn't sure how the yeah. army was accepting of that. Were you closeted at the time? I or was. You just kind of don't ask, don't tell. Don't ask, don't tell. At this yeah. time, um, I mean, it was sort of, I would say, 2008. When I, when I was before before I before I went over into Iraq um, in 2009, I would say that uh, I started started to become more aware of the idea 
that there might be a period of time in which there isn't a don't ask, don't tell, in which I don't have to hide this from my, you know, because it seems silly to like hide something that everybody, everybody knew. Everybody okay. Knew. So it wasn't like, it was not as serious in 2008 as it was in the 90s. Got um, it, got that it, was my it. sense. And I, and I was in a non sort of combat role. Yeah, so it wasn't like yeah. I was an, inf I wasn't a dark kicker. I was yeah. a number cruncher. Yeah. So I, I got the sense that, um, that I, that I was pretty, and you know, and this is, the intelligence field is at at least in in our unit we were sixty percent female. So mm -hmm. you know, like this is a this is this is again oh, not, is that not right? infantry, you know, this is not, not ground pounder type. So most infantry. of your colleagues when you went to Iraq and actually started doing the an the analyzing were, were women. Yes. It was mm -hmm. uh, it was it was mo it was primarily like women were the majority in my office. Mm -hmm. Um and so yeah, uh, I, I, I got the sense that nobody cared. Well that's that's, that's great. But uh trans Stuff was a different matter. Okay. I started that, and that started to kick in for me um, while I was while I was deployed. I was like, you know, because I was I was doing things like cross dressing and you know trying to explore this uh, new thing um, quite a bit uh, more. And uh, and that that was a, that was a that was a bit more difficult. That, I see. You couldn't get around that. That one that one was not. People were not understanding. Yeah, and that. I think that that was where I started to feel more of frustration, and more sort of distance and more alienation mm -hmm. i think during around that time it's funny you go well you know being being homosexual is more accepted understood and i think at the same time this issue of being trans was probably a really new conversation and yeah. i don't think people i think they've yeah. come a long way i think people there's like insane amounts of transphobia in the world that's yeah. disgusting yeah well but, I, you uh, know like i often like yeah. i have to remind people like in 2010 like nobody was talking about this stuff yeah exactly and then totally. i came out of prison in, two, in 2017 and it's like the main issue mm -hmm. that people want to talk about and now in 2022 like i just want people to shut up about it really like, please please leave us alone mm -hmm. we do not do this. <laughs> we, we I mean, you know, like, you know, whenever, like, of course, you know, they, they're, they're like, oh, yeah, you want to recruit people. Well, guess what? Yeah, I kind of do. I, I'm like, I'm coming for you. Oh, yeah. We're coming we're, for we're, your yeah, kids. We're, yeah, we're coming. We're <laughs> coming for you. We're going to. Yeah, they're going to quote gonna you clipped. on that. Yeah. You're going to be on Fox News. <laughs> yeah. We, yeah. Guess what? We, we are. Chelsea Manning. Are I mean, is... and, you know, and this, this goes back to Harvey Milk, you know, like Harvey Milk, you know, like his, his whole pitch, you know, running, running for supervisor in San Francisco was, uh, my name is Harvey Milk and I'm here to recruit you. So, uh, yeah, I might be a and I'm here to recruit you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, it's a glamorous lifestyle, and everybody loves you for being trans. Yeah, it's and you hard. Get, yeah, and you get, yeah. you get you get to take you get to take these nice pretty pills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so we're in boot camp. Things are going pretty good. And then, how long are you in boot camp? And then you get get before you get deployed to Iraq. Oh, I wasn't in, so. Um, I mean, boot camp is a Navy term. Just okay, uh, it's a Navy uh, and Marine Corps. Term, what would I? So. What do you? What call is it? In our... uh, it's basic training. Basic training. Yeah. Basic training. Got basic. It. Yeah. Um, little little terminology correction there for for the for the military. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes. Yes. Um, but yeah, like. Um, but yeah, I, so I actually spent uh, about a year uh, with my unit in uh, in upstate New York, that was Fort Drum, New York. Um, that was what I was attached to. Um, and, uh, and I just did, just did like watch the Canadian border type stuff, hmm. you know, just make sure that, you know, Canadians aren't invading. They don't get <laughs> in here, damn it. Yeah. So, uh, go, uh, the, uh, our mission was, uh, Homeland Security. That was mm. I see. Our role for a year. And then we went and, uh, we actually were actually, we're, we're actually supposed to go to Afghanistan in. 2000, uh, in two, December, 2009 was, we were originally slated to go to Afghanistan. Um, but the Obama administration shifted over uh, a few units and moved things around to cause a surge in Afghanistan, uh, go, leading into 2010 and 2011. So it was a, a shift of resources from Iraq, which was drawing down and moving to Afghanistan. Got it. So we actually got bumped up on the, on the calendar to, I think, September or October of 2009. And then we had our theater change. So then we had all this work that I had done for a year pre-deployment for mm. Afghanistan. Mm was thrown away and uh and it's like hey oh just kidding like you're going to iraq and you're going to iraq like in three months so mm. uh, so how does that happen they're like hey just someone comes and they're like all right you have three months and we're going to iraq yeah this is this yeah. is big this is big thing in the military call or the army called the pass chart it's like where the where, where the big divisions and brigade combat teams are and at least in the time this time frame and so it would you would see like the patches of the different units and uh and the numbers and it would be like in different part, points of time where they were, and it would be shifted over. But yeah, mm -hmm. 
you, you, you would check the patch chart if you wanted to know when you were deploying it. Only certain people even knew like the time frame. It was like, you know, it was, it, it, the, the, the troop movements tend to be, you know, uh, secret. So. When you're in the army, do you go back home every weekend or how does it work? Like overseas? Not a not oh, overseas, at the base. That one year. Yeah, I went. On, I went on. I, I went. I went at home for the weekend. I mean, lived. I lived upstate New York, which you know was a drive drive down to Maryland. And it's mm. not, right. It's not too far. Right. Like six, five six hours. So yeah, mm. I could do. We, we we had for three or four day weekends. We had weekend passes. Uh, I on multiple occasions definitely violated the seventy five mile rule. Um, you can't like, leave. You can't go within seventy five miles. Yeah, you can't go. You can't leave uh, seventy five miles of a uh, base. Uh, at least at Fort Drum uh, in 2009, and uh, and I did. I went down to Maryland for the weekend sometimes. <laughs> Why is that? Just for army readiness? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. 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 I think it, I think it's 50. I think it's typically 50 50 miles for most bases. But. Yeah. So you get deployed to Iraq. Are you nervous to go? You, I mean, no, that's I'm a excited. big deal. You're I, excited. I'm excited. You want to work. You want to. Yeah. Go. You know, like I enlisted obviously yeah. with the intention of. Mm -hmm the troop search and being involved in that and it mm -hmm. just sort of didn't pan out that I was going to be there but uh, I was excited I was ready to do my job I was super happy thrilled to finally do what I had trained to do what I was preparing to do what I'd spent uh, a year of my life preparing for you know in, in terms of doing my work and being very prepared for it and, uh, and uh, genuinely being excited and I, I hit the ground running really that's interesting so <clears throat> by the way how do they fly you over there do they have their own charted Army planes. Yeah. So you do. I see sometimes yeah. they fly just coach. Yeah. Basically, they just uh, they just take they just take like a Delta plane and they mm -hmm. just uh, they're like. Oh, they, for real? Yeah. They they contract out like uh, airlines, uh, and just say like the like, you know this, the the pilots are Delta or really? United or huh. American uh, American Airlines, and then your the the um, stewardess or the the um, the flight attendants are. Uh, that that as well, and uh, it's just like, and then it's just us with our our right. So it's <laughs> all it's all military. The whole and, plane, yeah. And you still get. And the, the officers get the first class upstairs. Ah, uh, that's <laughs> of course. <laughs> and they still serve you peanuts and all that stuff and water. It's like a normal yep. flight. Yeah, it's like a normal flight except you have. <laughs> wow, that's very interesting. <laughs> I, I, Those I, are actually, the I actually have a picture. I, I have this funny picture that I that I have uh, even to this day, uh, where I I took a picture of of uh, of uh, it was my. Uh, it was it was my M16 or mm -hmm. my M sorry my M4 mm -hmm. and my M4 is just like sitting there with like with, with like the the optic and it's sitting in my chair and it's like <laughs> uh, like in in like a plane I'm just like TSA is really let, letting their guard <laughs> down. <laughs> yeah, <for sure>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we land in Iraq. Do you go with your team from before or is at that point? We were split up a little bit to I shift see. everything over. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Some people, yes. Yeah, people, so like, no. you know, there's like the torch party, and then there's like the pre party, and then there's the main body, and then there's the little stragglers. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see. So you, you land, and then like, how quickly do you have to, like, a big travel to go to your new base? Do you, yeah. Yeah. Like, and I was like, very, very movie, right? You know, you're. You get you, you get into a C-130, and then you get off of the C-130. You go into you know you're processed in. And What's then, a C-130 like a armored vehicle? No, C-130 is a C-130 rolling down the strip. It's a plane. You know, oh, it's a it's plane. The air, it's the airborne plane. It's the plane that you know people jump out out of. Uh, is that the one we that Biden was in, Dan? I think it was the C-17. Oh, okay. So no, you land at the airport. You get on a new plane. One of these big fly. Oh, okay, just with the. I see. I see. I see. Wait, is that a C-130? Yeah, that's a C-130. It's like open on the side? Yeah, some of those are AC-130s, which those are the ones that have like, they actually have like a howitzer like on the side that shoots. Uh, it's like a big cargo right. plane for people to parachute out of. But you, obviously did, you didn't do that. No, we didn't. You didn't jump out of it. Yeah. <laughs> no, we didn't jump out of it. But uh, yeah, we, we landed, <laughs> but it was a combat landing. So it's like your, <gasps> your stomach goes up near your chest. What, <laughs> what does that mean? It's like, psh, you know, it's like a, it's like you're on a roller coaster, like, woo. Oh, really? On, that intense? Yeah, it's like straight down. Oh my god. <laughs> They're doing that to like evade. Yeah, because yeah, see. you know, it's a war zone. I see. So oh. to, just to lessen their descent area. Yeah. Really? Wow, interesting. But yeah, uh, but yeah, you know, and then uh, and then we took a helicopter out to our uh, remote base in east, you know, east of Baghdad, eastern Baghdad. Interesting. Wow. So it was remote. Was there like a military presence, or was it kind of a secret thing? Uh, oh, the base? Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, it was, it was remote. It was a hammer, uh, which is um, 30 kilometers east of the 
of the main part of eastern Baghdad. So nothing around. Just if, you, a, if you're just crunching around. numbers, why why the remote base? Uh, the, the for, for the drawdown, uh, one of the agreements for the drawdown was to reduce the number of um, the number of uh, bases and, oh, and positions in the cities. I see. So you were you were uh, d part of a dwindling force. Yes. Of uh, U.S. military. Yeah, we were going home. I see. I see. Time. Was that odd for you to be flying into Iraq as everyone's leaving? Uh, well, no, because it was it was it wasn't clear that we were leaving at that time. Hmm. Um, so it, there was a debate about it. Like, obviously, part of the drawdown was leave the cities. Obama had said that you know he had set a timetable. It was actually the Bush administration's timetable for leaving uh, for the withdrawal, and that which then became Obama's timetable. Right. Um, and so you know we. It, it looked like we might be, but we also were hedging, sort of like, okay, what if we need to bring back more? I and then, like, I remember there was still construction going on, okay, even while we were talking about leaving. Hmm. So very much one foot in, one foot out. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Yeah. So you're stationed here. So how many people are you basically stationed with? Uh, wow. Um, I think it was. I don't remember the numbers, but it was at least fifteen hundred. In the base. Well, how many people Whoa. did you have like an immediate working with? Is that big to you? Fifteen hundred? Sounds yeah. like a Seven. lot. Yeah, it was, it was medium size. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, U.S. military is big. Yeah. yeah I mean, my <laughs> base had maybe like forty people. I yeah. Know. Did it? That really was the number of people 40? in my office. Oh. It was very small. The number of people in my office was like forty. The number of people, so and they were all analysts, or they're doing all kinds of different stuff. Analysts, yeah, different, different, different roles. Is your work collaborative, or is it kind of just like a wolf, solo wolf stuff? We were work group style, baby. We were, we were doing the, we were doing the Silicon Valley uh, um, working group. Interesting. Yeah, in that time, we, like we were doing the the lean, sort of lean uh, office type environment where you know rotating roles and. Um, you know, like you, you, you would have a different, you'd have different roles at different times. It was, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense because like the rest of the military is very hierarch, is mm -hmm, very hierarchy, mm -hmm. right? It's just like you're, you are, you know, you like you, you're, you have a captain who mm -hmm. has a first sergeant who mm -hmm. has a staff sergeant yeah. and, or a, or a math or, or, you know, some, some, uh, you know, like a, or, or some sergeant or whatever who goes down with the corporal and goes down to the privates, right? And no, it was not like that. It was very fluid. Hmm. No, every, everybody sort of had their different positions and roles. It was a bit more horizontal and a bit more fluid in terms hmm. of like the actual work. Hmm. Because it's a bottom-up sort of structure. The intelligence work is stuff that comes in and then is brought up and you know, uh, um, presented to the, the uh, staff officers. Interesting. The, you know, the staff officers being you know, your, um, your commander, their XO, um, their administrative officer, their intelligence officer, their operations officer, their supply officer, et cetera, mm -hmm. legal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're, you're basically working with a bunch of analysts. And basically, at what point do you start thinking, like, you know, start having kind of like a gender, gender, uh, well, this, is, this, is, this has been ongoing. This, is, this has never stopped. But it's, you had mentioned that it got really bad when you were deployed. In yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I, it was definitely becoming more marked and more uh, of a significant uh, sort of thing as I was, you know, and, and then it continued on because, like, uh, I, I don't, we're not going to get into the, 20, into the 2010 leaks themselves, but um, we started it. But I, I, so I got arrested, obviously, for a big leak. Um, which the contents of which I cannot discuss. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. Under non-disclosure agreements existing to this day yeah. from 2007. Yeah. Um, uh, which has made writing a book very difficult, as you can imagine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, uh, getting it through the the publication process was uh, has has caused a significant amount of delay. Um, we did go to the government for permission because we don't want to get sued out into oblivion. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, of course. And, unlo and unlike you know someone like Ed, like Edward Snowden. Uh, who you know lives in Russia? I live in the United States, and I have to pay taxes. Right. Mm -hmm. I've, I've I've got the IRS, so I gotta I you know I, I can't I can't play around. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I, we've been very careful with with sort of uh, writing the book. But uh, but yeah, by the time I got into the prison system, um, it was clear. Like I was like, yes, this is this That's is when you kind this of is important to me. I'm trans. Interesting. I know what I need. 
Um, but by that time, it was, it, you know, the lawyers had basically written it off as like too late uh, for me to sort of like seek that. But I didn't give up. And so, you know, I went through this long court martial process. And basically, until, I waited until after that court martial process because it was just so intensive because it was literally a year, it was a three and a half year long process through the court yeah. system, you know, the military court oh, system. Our dog just did a big old puke. Feels nice. Better. That's a good, that's, <laughs> that's some chunks. Yeah, he has a puking problem. He pukes all the time. Poor boy. Aw. So, so what, well, something striking about your story is actually you were the first uh, military person to undergo, like, hormone therapy and yeah. stuff like that. So, I mean, that's, that's very interesting. Yeah, at least, at least with, a, with approval. People have been taking... Like this, first, this, this, first acknowledged this people have, person yeah, by the people, military. This, especially, especially guys taking extra testosterone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, of course, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and there have been trans... You know, there, I, I remember there's actually a story of a trans person who enlisted, who enlisted in the military and, uh, man, and just while going through a unit transition, just, like, made, just said that there was a gender marker mistake in their paperwork, <laughs> and then somebody just like clicked a button, and they just got it done. Wow. Right? Oh, like, and they got away with it for like a year. Whoa. Crazy. <laughs> wow. So, so for example, uh, do you get baby. like, they have like the male uniform and the female uniform? Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. I Where you? Very gendered right. existence. Was that difficult for you at the time there? Or were I you mean, in prison, in prison, it became like, it became very important like for, to, for the prison to enforce. And we were, uh, I, I had um, the American Civil Liberties Union, uh, Chase Strangio, uh, fantastic attorney and a fantastic advocate to this day mm -hmm. uh, on trans issues, um, fighting lots and lots of legal battles uh, all the way up to the Supreme Court in some cases on a regular basis, uh, including many of these like bullshit laws that keep, at, that keep getting proposed and passed in, uh, in like the state houses. Um, and uh, but yeah, he was my attorney, and uh, you know we, we we like fought on all these different nitpicky little reg regulations and things to get. That's incredible there. what you. Yeah. One of the things yeah. that we lost that we never won on until I until I was released, and it was the day that I was I released was like the day that I stopped cutting my hair because they did not oh. let up on the hair. That's They're like, really? You can get hormones. We can give you makeup. We can give you all these different things. We can give you all these. But not the hair. But hair, no. They were just did not want to relent on hair. Well, what? women in the military can grow their hair, right? Yeah. And so I wonder AR six seventy dash one, baby. Oh, is that the code? That's the What's code. the code? Is there like a length regulation? Yeah, there's a, there's a whole regulation. Yeah. It, cha it changes every. So why year. why do you why think it was hair? that they were stuck on that one? Yeah. I, we have no idea. It's, Interesting. It's uh, it's, the, the, all they had to do was was do a, a one page exception to policy, and they just would not relent. I think would think makeup would be more of a so that's what we thought. Right? We're like, yeah. We, we did. We expected to not get makeup and to, to get hair. Get the hair. <laughs> just, Do you think it was a spite thing or just a weird bureaucracy thing? I I don't know. Maybe they're worried about court cases and sort of because they they have they have a prison system. The military has a prison system, and I think they might have been worried about uh, uh, about different uh, religious groups in prison wanting their hair exceptions mm. approved. Okay, they thought it maybe it was a if they allow one, so to speak. then yeah. yeah right. okay. So yeah, they, it was. It wasn't so much spite with me as spite against like a, lo a whole host of different mm -hmm. groups of people. I see, <laughs> just general spite. So I want to ask you more about your time in Iraq. But if just if feel yeah. free, if I ask a question that you can't answer, just let me know. And I'll, I'll yeah, pass I mean, it. Well, you know, just like it's just dark. It's just dark period of time, and now it's even darker. It is why. I mean, I, I feel like you know, I, I feel like the U.S. is uh, you know, the U.S. is going through. Uh, it's going through. A, going through some things going through a, a time period you know and, and actually the my whole life experience um you know uh everything was like you know like i, I went from like 2010 and you know being like free and out that was the last time that i was like free and out um before i went uh into the the uh that, that, well not even that like oh. you know uh, deployed de oh. returning to my deployment and then going to prison and then coming out in t in 2017 and um, yeah, it was like, I was like, oh, shoot, stuff is about to go down here. Mm. Like, that vibe, like, I, it, it was immediate. Like, I went through, like, a three-day, three- or four-day cool-down period, you know, kind of, like, just sort of, like, getting a sense of, like, okay, like, you know, because I remember the first time I looked at uh, an iPhone, right? You know, it's, it's not that I didn't know how to use it. It was that, it was like, my, my brain was, like, fried by the, by the sort of instant, 
like deluge of information mm -hmm. right from it and like even like the 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 sort of super small pixels on the screen mm -hmm. just sort of like we're like wow this is like this is like making my eyes hurt mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so actually like i needed like a cool down period of like a few days um but yeah but as soon as i got out uh i was like oh this is different <laughs> the vibe is different the vibe right. drops it's right. sort of the boiling frog is that the sense that i got right. it was like this is a remark like because like trump trump had been elected the year before um, yeah. There was the whole election cycle before that. Um, you know, you, this, this was post-Occupy, post-Ferguson, you know, the uh, militarization of the police, um, the sort of rise of right-wing extremism. Um, Charlottesville happened only a few weeks after. Yeah, that was, a, that was a, and I had, that was you know, a dark friends, time. And I had friends who, yeah. who I, and I had friends who, you know, were, were out there protesting. Really? So you, you went into prison, Obama was president, you came out, Trump was president. Yeah. So that that was yeah. probably, yeah. And my actually uh, one of the one of the most alarming part parts of my whole life story is the fact that like I spent as I, I, I Obama commuted me at the end of at the end of his term, but he commuted me to time served plus 120 days. Mm -hmm. So I had 117 days of the Trump administration. I was like, oh boy. You thought he might take it, he might fuck with you. <laughs> I mean, it hadn't happened, but this was a this was definitely it was scary. Unprecedented, uh, well, you were facing thir your full term was like 35 years. Right? Yeah, it was 35 years. I got I got sentenced to 35 years, so I got 28 28 years like cut That's, off. Wow. And if you but also the thought of facing down another 28 years if Trump decided to try to do something. Must well, yeah, be I was terrifying. I was like I was like and, and I, honestly the till the day I was released. Like the morning, the morning that I was like in upstate New York, like, okay, I'm out. Um, was uh, I was like, this isn't happening. Right, 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 right. That's right. crazy. And I remember, I remember that, like, I, I remember I went through this whole process and, and actually needed therapy over this, which was like, sort of like, because like when you're when you're given a 35 year sentence, yeah, and you've had time to digest that, seven years is a pretty hefty amount of time. Oh yeah. When you've had time to digest that. You're like, okay, this is this it. is it. this is it. This is happening. You write all that off in your brain. So like the idea that I was going to be let out and be like, op be opening up a credit card, you know, opening up a credit card balance or buying or renting an apartment or paying bills, just just unfathomable. Weird, surreal. Yeah, just so yeah, far, yeah, it was so yeah. far away that you know I just didn't even think about it or didn't even worry about it, and I just wrote it off. And then to have that be returned to me huh. was actually a shock to my system. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, that's, I think, is, in my opinion, that's sort of the definition of institutionalization is whenever right. you have accepted sort mm -hmm. of that, you know, like your, most of your adult life is written off. Right. You have plenty of time to, you know, screw around in prison and, and play, video, you know, or play, uh, uh, play Dungeons and Dragons and, and dice, dice games. Is that what you did in prison? I did, yes. Oh, doesn't sound that bad <laughs> when you put it that way. Did you have good friends? <laughs> like I did. Yeah, I had I had a lot of friends in prison. Um, you know, uh, you know, you again, you know, institutional environment. You develop camaraderie, make yeah. friends. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I I connected really well with the people that I was that I was there with. Um, we had one very simple and important rule in prison, which was don't ask anybody what the crime is and don't look into it. Oh, for you real? Don't, you don't, you don't want to know. You don't want to know. <laughs> oh, that's so interesting. Because it makes things a lot smoother and a lot easier when you don't know. Oh, that's real interesting. <laughs> but everyone probably know who you were, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. It, it didn't matter. Were but you I, given a chance to wrap things up, say goodbye? No, I was yeah, to, it was to your fellow prisoners. It was immediate. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, they took me. They, they're like, we're not like. You but know. you knew the day was coming. I knew the day was coming, but they put they put me in they put me in a separate unit immediately. When the community. Yeah, they through? they saw it on T like the prison staff saw it on T like I, it's in my book like a whole story about it, but. Like there was, they saw it on TV, and they're like, "Oh, you're you're going, you're, you're we're we're putting you aside." Why'd they do you, that? Uh, I think they just didn't want anything bad to happen to me in the meantime. Mm. Like anything. Interesting. An injury in the workshop. If you know. only Epstein's prison guards were as careful mm. with yeah, they were yeah, with you. oh yeah, it's super suspicious. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. Super suspicious. How they? How I want to be. I want. I have opinions on this. Okay. Actually, <laughs> somebody who's been incarcerated in the in both both the military and the federal and the and, and I mean, you were a high priority prisoner, but. Jeffrey Epstein was a very high priority prisoner. Yeah. We can do an aside here. What do you think about that whole sh thing about how murder? Yeah, murder. murder. You do. <laughs> that's that's how, how that's how a prison murder happens. Mm -hmm. I I know when it happens. I'm not going to say I'm not, I'm not going to say like some of the sad stories from prison where we know bad stuff happened because like, you know, it's like how do you prove it as an inmate? But 
um, and some of these stories are my book. Um, and uh, but yeah, like definitely. Because it's, it's like it's super, like it's definitely like oh yeah, I'm just like that suspicious. The cameras were off. That's the how you do it. Weren't that's on. how you do it. If you want to, if you want to get rid of somebody in prison, that's how you do it. The guards do that kind of thing. That's all they do. They really? just fuck with people. Yeah, they fuck with people. It's, I mean, you know, ma- imagine this. Imagine you're sitting there and your job is to is to watch inmates for twelve hours, mm-hmm. and you're just sitting there, or tossing your piece of paper or whatever. Like, of course you're gonna screw with us. Like we're we're like, and we're not, and like nobody, you know, nobody listens to inmates. Nobody, you know. Um, I, I want to say this real fast because I'm, you know, I'm really passionate about this, and that is, um, you know, I've, I've been asked, a lot, you know, people ask me often ask me a lot, was it scary being in prison, or you know, like, like, you know, how, how are people in pr- prison? And I, and I just got to say this, time and time again, the most violent and dangerous people in prison, without question, were prison guards every mm-hmm. single time, and this was military, civilian, um, state federal, uh, just endless amounts of uh, fear and anxiety of the arbitrariness and, and the, uh, the, the sort of lack of, expecta- uh, of, of consistent expectations mm. of what uh, a CO or a prison guard or, or somebody who's watching at, or a correctional uh, officer of any, of any variety mm. was going to do, mm. um, and the senior staff as well. And, uh, and you know, it's, it's like, it's like, it haunts me to this day because, like, I, you know, I don't associate like somebody who's like in a ju- prison uniform with with like a threat. Whereas like I see somebody like in a in in a in a CO uniform, and I'm like, ooh. You have a little trauma yeah. left over. From oh that. yeah, definitely. So sad. Do you think it attracts sickos who like power? Absolutely. That's what it is. And it, it's even worse than being it, it, in some in some respects. I think it's actually worse than being like a regular cop because at least a regular cop gets to, like carry a gun, right? Mm. They're sort of like the th- the second thought. Like they're the. They're the sort of like afterthought sort of cops, right? Was there any kind of nor- was there normal prison guards, or was it just an accepted culture of like these are our objects to fuck with and do what we want? I would say that it's that there that it's a rule of thirds, which is pretty consistent with what I've seen in other in other institutions. Um, so there is uh, there there are the prison guards who are goody two shoes. They care about their job. They really. Um, they they really think that they're doing a, a good they're doing a service or whatever and they're fair to you guys and prisoners. and they try to be fair okay um they they that's a high attrition rate that's a fast turnover rate right of makes people. sense yeah then there's the, the then the there, there's the prison guards who um who look the other way at the bad apples right okay they're like I'm just doing a job I'm cutting a paycheck. Um, you know, I don't I, I hear, hear no evil, see no evil. They're not I'm, sadistic. They just they're just here to work. Right, but if they see something that's that's sketchy, mm-hmm. they will look the other way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And then there's the then then there's the people who are absolutely sadistic. They will do the worst kinds of things. They will play games. They will lie. They will cheat. They will steal. They'll they're wow. just and they get away with third it. And nobody lot. will question. And then it's the other. And then the worst part is that 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 other third of people who look, look the other away. way yeah. just look, you know don't do anything and they don't say anything. So when when there's like a really sick prison guard, um, does anything ever happen to them? Ever? Very rarely. I've never seen it. I've 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 only ever seen people re- retaliated against for reporting it to, and that includes uh, other people. other guard. <clears throat> well, that happens in the police as well. Just yeah, normal the same police. It's the same. The blue wall of silence kind of thing is is. What is was universal. the most uh, effed up thing that you saw a prison guard do? It's in my book. Okay. <laughs> it's it's it's. How about the second dark. most then? Uh, <laughs> second darkest thing. <laughs> second darkest thing um, that I've seen in, uh, in in prison guards do. Um, uh, it's not it's not one thing but like it's just neglect of of people with mental health issues right wow. people who people say i'm in a, i like a person having a mental health crisis saying i'm having a dark time i'm i'm have i'm not doing so good right now mm-hmm. i need to see somebody mm-hmm. and the just absolute like disgust or um disregard and then placing that person in a more dangerous situation, right? Putting them in a cell alone with their with, with sort of like boot laces or something, right? They're like, do it. Yeah, they're essentially. And, yeah, and then whenever and then whenever somebody follows through with it, they're just like, oh well, we didn't know, and mm-hmm. you know, like, the cameras weren't Whoa, that's on. That's so sick. Yeah, it's just, it's just du- it's just du- extremely dark. Wow. They really see you as some other things. I would imagine, yeah. not We're, human, yeah. subhuman. Yeah, and I think I mean that, it's kind of what society's taught us, right? Yeah. Because like. Law, you know, it's the law and order effect, right? In my mind, 
um, because like we, we have this very pop culture understanding of 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 the, the justice system, right? Um, which is, you know, uh, a, a crime takes place, um, an offender or a suspect is, is arrested, um, a prosecutor uh, builds a case with the detectives or, or the officers or whatever, and then it goes to trial, uh, and then there's a long, there's sort of a trial process which never really actually happens with plea deals. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then, there, then after the trial, there, you know, somebody goes to, you know, somebody goes to jail, and that's the end of the story, right? You know, it's like it's it's that's the end of the story. But for that person, typically, they that's not the end of the story. It's years and years and years of of the rest right, of their lives. Right. People grow. People change. Mm -hmm. People people really do change. And it doesn't take that long. It takes maybe you know, especially especially if you're in your twenties. It doesn't you know five you know five years it's in your twenties mm -hmm. is a mm -hmm. long time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah in terms of like uh, of your of your personality and sure. and your sort sort of changing. So you would, see, you know, I, I, and I've seen this a lot, where you know, somebody, somebody, somebody who is like a terrible person will like become like a really like stable, hmm. you know, reasonable person like a, within a within a, within a three to four year period of time, right? And so um, we ha we sort of forget that about pe people because of this pop culture thing, uh, and and it's and even you know, and it, even with like ju justice reform advocates, I have this problem because like they're very focused on like the 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 at the scene. Um, police brutality type stuff, right? Mm -hmm. You know, which is which is awful, right? You know, it's like murdering. It's it's like murdering of people, murdering of, of houseless people, um, the abuse of people, um, not taking you know not taking people of color or immigrants at their word whenever they say that, that that they've been abused or they've been harassed or that you know that that uh, that they've been falsely accused of something. You know, like there are a lot of cr criminal justice aspects that focus on that, but they forget that like that's. That we have two million people, and we have like yeah. well, I think it's what uh, over Almost two million. A percent, uh, a whole percent. Yeah, it's like twenty-five right. percent of the world's prison population yeah. is in the United States. Yeah, and you know, often voiceless, often not unseen, mm -hmm. often forgotten about, even by people who really do care and really, really do want to focus on these issues because of just sort of the way we've sort of focused on stuff. Because we, we focus on stuff because we can see whenever there's pol police brutality yeah. right. that happens on a cell phone camera. We can mm -hmm. see when that happens. But when it, ha when it happens in a prison, there's no cell phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the prison system is one of the most, in America now, it's one of the biggest uh, problems we have as a society. I mean, the yeah. way that it's privately owned, yeah. that there's a vet, um, financial interest in keeping people in prison for as long as possible. Absolutely. And also there's a profit motive, so like the conditions are going to be horrible. Yeah. The They're prison industrial complex. It, is, it's just is, a it's a fucking nightmare. It really is. Yeah. And, and like nonviolent offenders in prison, I mean it's just fucking horrible. Yeah. It's hard to bridge that gap when you don't get to see what goes on there. Right. Yeah, exactly. And that you know how do I, you go to battle over something you don't see? And, and as much yeah. as I have solidarity with people like I I remember 2020 with George Floyd with the, with the George Floyd yeah. protest and um Breonna Taylor protest like yeah. you know I I you know I felt this affinity and the solidarity with with them. But like it's it's also it's also don't forget about people in prison because yeah. We, yeah. we don't have cameras mm -hmm. in prison we can't take our own cell phone photos we or videos we you know this stuff happens the revolution i've seen this stuff with my own yeah, eyes yeah. Yeah. and you have you have to believe me that this mm -hmm. happened it seems also that people are just getting do you think in general people are getting over sentenced they're going to prison for too long you said that you could change in five years do yeah, I think I mean 35 years is insane almost for any crime. Do you? Yeah, think? I oh yeah, my uh, I'm a very different person than I was at 22. Mm -hmm. Very different. Yeah, I mean 22, you're still a kid. I'm, yeah, in all absolutely. honesty, you know. Yeah, I when I came out of prison, I was like I was like oh yeah, I'm like way different. You my still family have a chance you. to like you still have a chance to also build a life. I feel like where if you are released after 35 years what, yeah what happens with you then i like, mean you know it's the end of shawshank institutionalized Redemption, yeah. Shawshank yeah, redemption exactly. right you know, yeah the yeah. characters who like I, i'm not gonna lie i when i the first time that i was hurt that i heard about that i was getting out of prison i was actually scared mm. that was, was your it, first reaction um it wasn't my first reaction but like there was a couple days when i started to absorb that this is a possibility and i was like i i, I don't know like mm -hmm. i'm scared because i What's changed? What's different? You know, what? Um, you know, it was like an overwhelming thought, and this was only after seven years, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine somebody who's who, who's never held a cell phone before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, who's spent thirty, forty years in prison. I mean, you know, I, and you know, what I've 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 now had a chance to meet people who have spent many decades in prison and be released, and they are 
you know, after a couple of years, the the adapt the the adaptiveness of humans is is pretty incredible. Mm-hmm. But the the fear and the anxiety that comes with being released from prison for the first time is is very real, mm-hmm. and it's very and, and it sticks with you for a while. It lingers, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I you know and I'm still in therapy, you know, for for uh, dealing with institutionalization. I'm still in therapy for sort of de- dealing with the consequences of spending uh, such a su- such a large amount of time in like a, a hostile and institutional environment. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you know, it's very much it's very much still a part of my you know um, the difficulty that I have with you know developing you know long term relationships and friendships and things because you know like you know both 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 in prison and in and uh, and and in the military you know like I knew who had my back mm-hmm. and I knew what tomorrow brought and you now out here. I don't. Mm-hmm. Mm. I don't know who to trust, mm. and I don't know if somebody's putting on a front because I'm not with them 14 hours a day, mm. mm-hmm. like you know. Uh, and, and I don't know if they have my back. I don't know who who's who's like. I know the the prison guard's going to be unfriendly, but I know that like that this group of inmates here is going to have my back or whatever. And I don't have that out here. I'm not sure quite how far people are going to you know look out for me or who's going to be like uh, out and against me in a few in a few weeks or a few months. And I don't know what tomorrow brings. You know, I'm I'm switching from time zone to time zone. I'm going from city to city. I whereas like I was, it, I always knew I was going to be in in, in Oscar two two seven, right? My, mm. my cell, Oscar two two seven, in Oscar housing unit, right? For you know years. Were you you were out? Are you kind of living as a trans person in prison? Were the were the guards and the uh, prisoners accepting of that as well? Um. I would say the inmates are pretty accepting. Uh, I, think, I think the prison guards were. I think the prison guards were a little weirded out by it, but they got used to it. But mm. um, I'm. I'm. I think I'm just like a force of will. Like I'm just like a force of energy. Like in terms of my personality, so I. I really, you know, I. I'm very sociable and I'm really like engaged with people and I'm very extroverted. So I. I just got to you know like if if I encountered somebody who you know had res- reservations or hesitations about it, I would just like. Just be like, all right, let's play some basketball or something. Like, you know, <laughs> like, like, just see how I am. Like, you know, judge for yourself. That's very interesting, though. It seems like throughout your military and prison experience, where you would expect people to be kind of more traditional or masculine, that they were accepting of either your gayness or your transness. Yeah, I think I think that the I think that military people, at least in that time frame, get a bit of a bad rap, you know, in terms that's, of like that's very that's encouraging. Yeah. At least. I mean or, or nice maybe I'm just so uh, or maybe I'm just so skewed in my mentality that I just I that I see, you know, that that I haven't really encountered it, you know, or I I don't see it as much because like, you know, like I, I but yeah, like when I see it happen to somebody else though, I get oh, I get defensive. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, you yeah. Know, but I, I, and I think that I'm not as near. I, I don't nearly take things as personally, and so, and, I, and I try to, you know, if somebody if somebody's like transphobic to me, um, in pri- in a prison environment, and I want to be specific, like the context here. If somebody's transphobic to me, I'm just like, okay, bring it. Like, what, like, what, what, what's your issue here? Like, I'm I'm very upfront about it, and it doesn't always work, but mm-hmm. you usually. Usually they start to warm up, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. and they start to be like, "Okay, like you're different, you're, mm-hmm. you know," which is not, which is still an element of transphobia mm-hmm. in my mind. It doesn't mean that they're not a transphobic person, but I've had to deal with people like that, and you know, I, I can see that there's like some ice breaking that happens because we're in an environment like that. Mm-hmm. Now out here, it's a different story. Yeah, I want to go back to Iraq. Yeah. So. Basically, how long were you uh, working at that base uh, until, I guess, like up until you started kind of like leaking stuff? Like how long were you working there? Uh, yeah, so I was, uh, I think it was January, February 2010 uh, was the time frame. Uh, it's all in my testimony, uh, which uh, I, uh, I testified to the things in trials, to the specific things that I've been told that went through the government process that I can say. And so I refer people to the... Uh, 2013 to the January, uh, I think it was January 29, 2013, uh, uh, testimony that, because anything outside of that range, in fact, in fact, I have to go through government approval. Mm-hmm. To, wow, to is that part of so? But because because uh, yeah, I was I was in I was an intelligence analyst. Well, it, what are they risk? What are you risking them just suing you? Because you've already yeah, yeah, I can get they could sue me. They could it, sue. Oh, you. And here here's the fun part. Because yeah. you've already gone to jail for like leaking cl- right, but the, a, the the same non-disclosure agreement doesn't end. So. If if I were to violate it again, oh, you're st- back. interesting. Back, oh, it I doesn't see. end. I see, I see. It, I see. Uh, so so it, it it ends either it ends either whenever the U.S. government says 
uh, that you know that this information has been approved and it's declassified, which we're getting wow. closer to. Um, so. Oh, really? So you could be released potentially from this NDA? Yeah, yeah I will. Or you somewhat. Know, so, sometime in my lifetime, or uh, or if the United States dissolves for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> one or the other. Yeah, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll wait. I can't wait to talk to you on that day. <laughs> I mean, oh yeah, look, we're, yeah, it's going to be an interesting day. I'm going to have a lot to say. There's a lot of missing pieces of the story. So, so let me just try to ask what I can. So you're working there. Let me ask this, a more personal question. Sure. What, was there something specifically no. that happened where you're like, I, 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 I need to whistleblow? No, no, no. I, I think um, it, was the cog it was me dealing with the sort of cognitive dissonance of me being, I was a puppy, right? I was like wet behind the ears, kind of very naive, really truly believing my job and my role. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Encountering the reality and sort of the, you know, ha having a, you know, it's, it's like it's like training day, right? You know, you sort of, right, right, you know, right. like Denzel Washington like pulls you aside and you know, t and, and walks you through. Smoke like, this crack. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. like smoke this PCP, right? Oh, yeah. You know, and like that that was like that was the gradual process that I went through, which was like, okay, like here's the reality, here the on the ground reality, and what you've been told are completely different. And and I felt. You know, I, I felt I felt upset. I felt you felt like maybe misled. Oh, I, I felt I felt very misled. You know, I felt very misled by 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 media, by our institutions, mm. you know, by, by our political. I bet a lot of soldiers feel that, uh, you know, I, I don't, I'm not I, I'm not going to speak for I'm not going to speak for, for a lot of veterans. But, you know, like I, I certainly have encountered friends and people that I know. That One sec. We lost power. Are we still live? Oh, because oh, okay. the TV went out. Yeah. And the AC so, too at the same time. CIA. Yeah. <laughs> Not this part. For you. No, sometimes our, our powers sometimes explode You're saying during too much. the AC season. Okay. okay, but we're still live, Dan. Yeah, fine. So they're um, coming. They're coming. So there, there was. Was there like a growing kind of resentment just over time when you're like, this is? I don't. No, I like, wouldn't say resentment. Yeah. I would say. I mean, like the 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 institutions that I've that I've that I felt the the, the most. That I cared about the most, that I lost a lot of faith in, um, especially because like I first went to the Washington Post and the New York Times. You know, everybody everybody knows the the, the big W word, mm -hmm. um, but you know the, those were not not my first places. Um, you don't say the W no, word. Yeah. You don't even say that word. Well, you know, it's. Just, yeah. <laughs> um, what was that big? What, yeah, was, what that? was that? <laughs> are we dying? Are we? Is America they are, dissolving? They are really coming for us. Yeah. What's that? What was that though? For real. It's something, oh, something like this. Wait, there's nothing upstairs. There's no upstairs. <laughs> yeah, there really are coming what? after. You're saying too much. <laughs> All right. Well. No. So. Um, All right, my security people are coming. No, I'm they're actually. I see they're somebody landed. looking out the window. Kim. There, there's a hello. There's a. Uh, <laughs> team sex. Yeah, exactly. There's a there's a black hawk upstairs dropping. <laughs> So it was you, yeah. You, I, I'm yeah, just I about that. You went yeah, to the New York yeah, Times. You the, went to the Washington. But Post. media institutions, yeah. I think, I think, let me down the most. I, I remember, I remember in, specifically there was like a uh, Tom Friedman article. Yes. Uh, that came out while during the election in Iraq. He's a he's an editorial he, he, for the New York Times, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he was basically he basically like like just pretended away the last like seven years of civil conflict of. Was that the roof again? That was mm -hmm. a. I felt that boom in my. What is fucking, going on, guys? That, that, that sounded like a potential firework. Yeah, that oh, sounded like a firework to me. Yeah. Oh, it's uh -huh. the dissolution of America. Good vibes. Wait, fireworks? Why? No, fire? I felt that. I felt that in my feet. <laughs> Why are people? That's a good indication that the vibrations are coming from the ground. So just a heads up. Oh, you <laughs> felt it in your feet? Yeah, I felt it in my feet. So. <laughs> I feel why, that, is right? there, why are people blowing <laughs> what up fireworks? Is Can someone look outside and see yeah, what's going on? Yeah, we look outside. Up kind of <laughs> is this address public? What? No. No, no, no. <laughs> no, it's not. We're not. This is not normal. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We've never had any issues like yeah. that. Yeah, but I was interested. So you, so go ahead about Thomas Freeman. I was a uh, captive. I'm listening. curious. Did you finish yeah. your term or was this happening while? Well, yeah, I was in jail for a long time. So I yeah, I basically, I basically, I feel I finished. Uh, I, I finished up to the. I was, I was in the, it was in the ending part of my enlistment. So, okay. Um, but that got extended by prison. Got it. 
So what was it that Thomas Friedman wrote? Thomas Friedman wrote an article about um, sort of, oh, I guess it, you know, and we ha uh, there are free and fair elections in Iraq now, which is a question mark uh, on the ground, um, and uh, that this has made the Iraq, the Iraq invasion justified, even though the was WMD stuff, you know, which I didn't really have a huge opinion on, on like a anything up to like 2004, I don't really have a strong opinion on because I didn't, I, I actually don't know anything pre prior to 2004. Um, in, in terms of like all of that, um, all of that discussion, um, and I was in high school. I was like a middle school, high school at the time. So, um, but you know, my understanding of, of sort of the uh, the the insurgency and the counterinsurgency and how that played out was this brutal. Um, you know, it was like a, there was an ethnic cleansing going on b between you know um, Sunnis and Shias. It was sort of like a a, um, a ratcheting up of of um, political rhetoric uh, across the political spectrum in, in Iraq. Um, it was looked the other way. We, uh, the United States government essentially picked a side and said, okay, like these people are more likely to win. Mm. Um, they might not be better. They not, might not be more democratic, but, um, and they might be using author autocratic means and methods to win, but we're gonna back them because they serve our, our security. So can I ask you, this is the kind of stuff that was on your mind during your service? Yeah. I see. I think so, because you know, like, you know, well, you're I, like, this place I, I, is I believed. I, yeah. you know, uh, we were uh, going there to stabilize exactly. and help, I and mean, this country was fucked up. Mm. Yes. Because of us. Yeah. Mm. And we were making it worse, essentially. And I mean, you had a front seat to that more, more than yeah. almost and then, anyone. And then and when I was like, well, what we're doing is not really helpful, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, then you get told, like, well, that's not your, that's not for you to decide. And you have Thomas Friedman writing shit like that. Yeah, You're and like, basically, con fuck? you know, manufacturing consent. He's doing consent. propaganda. Man manufactured consent at home. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, and yeah, I was like, I was like, I, one, one of the advantages to having all this stuff be out there um, uh, and in the, in the way that, it's, that, it, that, it, that it is out there is that you can't take it away. Right, it is the truth, right, it is right, the reality. Right. Take it or leave it. Mm -hmm. this, is what, what, this is what actually happened. It was, it was a brutal, ugly war. Yeah, so and many. We, we, it was. we did, you know, like, like you know, we, we, we did some pretty awful stuff and, and on a scale of decimation and destruction that, um, that uh, you know, that even to this day is 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 very rarely discussed or, or don't they estimate that like five hundred thousand Iraqi civilians? Uh, I mean, were I don't think we'll ever. The... I don't think we'll ever know. It's mm. it's insane. It's unfathomable. I mean, it's it's insane. Yeah. The amount of damage you know we and, did and, to that yeah. country. Yeah. And now and now you know. Well, I just wonder why. Because like, what's there's the... because bro. We didn't we, sick we, fuck, we didn't just dude. see we we just yeah. didn't see we didn't see Iraqis as people you know. Right. We didn't see them as people. We saw them as like terrorists. Uh, as, as a, Probably. A, as people in a, in a location, and yeah, and I, I, yeah, it's just, you know, it's 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 dark, and it's it make, it, it you know, it, it, I I I started to feel increasingly heartbroken just seeing all the stuff and feeling and starting because like I, I I know that I'm a I'm a very technical person, you know, I'm a STEM lord, and I'm super into you know technology and math and computer science and all of these other things and artificial intelligence, and I'm just doing number crunching, right? And I just couldn't do the number crunching anymore. I couldn't. You it felt was, just it exhausted. Too much. It was emotionally, emotionally exhausted. And I, just, and, I, and I just start and I learned so much about people and the region and what was going on on the ground every day that I just and I was just like, you know, it's, I started to feel like a connection or an empathy or an affinity. Did you feel guilty at all? Yeah, I, I feel, you know, I, I talk about it more in my book, just sort of how I feel about my role, my participation. You, you're right. Yeah. You're like, you know, damn, I'm involved. Because I believe, again, yeah. I was a true believer. Yeah, when you got there. Did you did you ever have time to, like, befriend locals during your service there? Yeah, uh, I mean, locals, but mo they're mostly uh, Iraqi federal police, Iraqi army. Uh, the, like, I, the, uh, I, the, the, the IF, the FP and the IA, as we called them. By the way, I just got to say, an estimate for dead, this is civilians, these aren't even militants. Yeah. Uh, about 200,000 wow. civilians died through Iraqi civilians. I mean, that's horrific. Unfathomable yeah, it's, numbers. Yeah, it's horrific. Yeah. It's horrific. But, you know, and that, now we're, you know, like well, and then, COVID was pretty devastating for us, so. so I don't know. It gives you there, a sense there's the one specific video that came out in the leak. Can I talk about that or no? Um, no. I will, will not get into that. Can I talk about it without you commenting on it? Or, I would or, rather Okay, not. yeah. Yeah, we're. Never mind. We're, we're, I'm trying to keep out a little yeah, problem. Okay, mm -hmm. all good. So, but anyway, yeah, horrific, just horrific, horrific, disgusting. Yeah. Violence. When you were finding out, were you trying to like 
leave the army or talk to people. That's not like, really no. an option, is it? It's no, it wasn't really an option. Yeah. I wasn't thinking yeah. about it. Um, mm-hmm. I mostly was just like thinking about like, you know, well, I, I wanted things to run differently and operate differently. And mm-hmm. I tried, I, and I tried my best to like do that in my mm-hmm. role, in, in my position, as best as I could. Mm-hmm. I know that people, I know that people are often confused about sort of. Um, about sort of like you know the, the the cognitive dissonance that happens where you are doing uh, uh, a an illegal act right and yet I in my in my mind I'm still in my mind trying to do my job mm-hmm. in a in a way that I've rationalized it and I, and I, that's how I was able to really rationalize this in my brain was like was like I tried to do my job I tried to do my role I tried to do the things that I that we actually set out to do and have a standard for and I can't do this. Mm-hmm. I have a question. You worked with like 40 other analysts. Did Were any of these other people disturbed by the stuff that you guys were working on? Or did you feel uniquely like... No, I, 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 don't, I don't feel that these, are, that these are concerns that are unique to me. Yeah. Um, I, 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 it's only human to see that and be like, yo, what the hell is this? Yeah, and you know, uh, and, you know it, goes, it goes back to the prison guard, guard conversation we had mm-hmm. before, the, thir- the rule of thirds. Like, there's, right. the good, there's the people who try to do good. I mean, I would certainly put myself in that camp. Um, and there's, which is a low, I mean, that's a high attrition rate. That's a, that's a high turnover rate. Yeah, because if you care too much, I think you just can't survive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then there's the, then there's the, you know, the, the people who don't care. And then there's mm-hmm. the sadistic, you know, people. So in that job, you feel like if you're sadistic, you can do like a lot of harm? I think, I think less so um, in, the, in sort of the, the soldier role. In, in the soldier role of being an analyst, I, I don't think it, you have that much of, of an opportunity right, to do right, that. Right. I think that door kickers, uh, had more of an opportunity, but Absolutely. you know, I, I, um, I, you know, the, the as as awful thing, as, as things were in in Iraq and Afghanistan um, with with U.S. soldiers, uh, and as, as as striking as it is, you know, I, I'm 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 it, I'm still appalled and shocked at just what you know police do in the United States and what they get away with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just it's just shocking amounts of of violence and um, and. You know, and uh, it, it, it all it all comes together in my mind. You know, I don't I don't see what happened. I don't see what happened in 2020 as like being different from what happened in Iraq in 2009, 2010. Like I just don't. I I, I see a common thread, which is the militarization of you know, um, uh, you know, some people call it the boomerang effect, where you know you go out and you do these foreign uh, occupations and you do the, the you you do an imperialism. And then you eventually they come home, and then you bring that mentality home, home with mm. your with your soldiers, mm. with your soldiers turning into cops, turning into mm. you know your judges, turning into your politicians, mm. mm-hmm. and you just bring this sort of um, counterinsurgency mindset home, where you know cops you know will roll through a neighborhood of you know of of uh, people of color, and they'll they'll view it in the same way that as as soldiers were in Iraq and Afghanistan, just mm. sort of like rolling through a neighborhood, like looking for the enemy. Mm. Mm. That's interesting. It's like the cost of fighting this unjust, yeah. bloody war. That's that's uh, so. Sorry, sorry to blackpill you some more. No, this is great. I mean, this is the stuff that I really want to discuss with you. Yeah, you know, um, I, I think I was saying earlier. Uh, uh, you know, I wore I wore the. I wore the all black because I heard you were black pill. Yeah, the last episode with this song, <laughs> I, I heard you that I was black pill. Yeah. I was feeling particularly black pill. I want to. I want to. I want to make you feel better if I can. Which is that I I'm I'm actually optimistic. You are. I am optimistic, and the reason why I say that in a dark time is not is not it's not copium. I swear it's not mm. copium. <laughs> I swear it's not copium. But um, I you know I have seen like in two thousand in two thousand ten when I went to prison, um, there wasn't a lot of political activism, particularly with progressives and on the left. Mm-hmm. Um, then there was Occupy, which turned into you know, uh, protest movements in, in Ferguson, which turned into, you know, uh, counter, you know, like uh, resistance against the Trump administration and, uh, you know, ICE and Charlottesville, which turned into the George Floyd protests of 2020. So I, I am seeing a groundswell mm-hmm. of activism, awareness, education, people talking about these things. Now, tran- think, on trans issues in particular, yeah. I've also seen a lot of progress. Listen, I think the people care. I yeah. Think, mm-hmm. And that's great. I think the people of America are on whole, we're, we're on the right, like the people care about the right things, genuinely, yeah. but the government is so functionally uh, fucked. Like, I mean, just look at, well, anyway, yeah. I don't, I'm not trying to stake uh, Blackfield. 
I bitch about this stuff. I'm I'm optimistic. Yeah, I actually think good. I actually think people. I th- well, I think I th- enough old people are gonna die off in the next. Tw- like I mean, genuinely, <laughs> like you look at fucking. Don't get so crazy. Don't old, be Catholic. I mean, I'm, I, 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 not, and not by me, by the way. <laughs> not by I'm me. Out for you. Not <laughs> Thank by you. Me. Out for your I mean, they're gonna die of natural causes, not by me, right? Yeah. Just to be clear. <laughs> but like, there's a lot of really old fucking people in Congress that just need to die of natural causes. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> in Minecraft. I'm serious. <laughs> I know, but. Like, I'm not threatening like, them. I'm just saying it's a yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah. They need to fucking die. Oh, uh, I think, I think, I think there was <laughs> find another way to say it. <laughs> I, 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 how? What's their name? Some, I think they what's had. That, what's her name? The 98 year old who's yeah. fucking. They, yeah. they don't retire, Dan. They never <laughs> retire. They cling to power. <laughs> no. What does it matter? They're gonna die. That's life. Speaking of, <laughs> I think, I think we got, we got something for you. Really? Oh, you brought me something. <laughs> uh, somebody brought this to you. They asked me what is that? <laughs> to Ethan. Uh, some sketchy guy. I don't know. From the. And what does that say? N. A. National. Oh, I see you spelled it out. From the NRA. This is from the NRA? <laughs> it's not a bomb. <laughs> I don't know. Let's find out. There's no Let's anthrax in this, right? Any wires coming All right. Out. So, wow. The NRA brought me something. This is great. Yeah. Thank you. It's in a I Kleenex in. box. <laughs> 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 oh, it's just clean it. <laughs> just tears. Yeah. That was, Wipe away your that liberal was, tears. Oh, really nice. Uh, salt. Here, I'll mail this back to them. They can they can smell my salty tears. <laughs> I'm gonna make good use of this. That's great. But that wasn't really right. That was from the NRA. Yeah, it was from me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because okay. you know, like you got because yeah, you know if. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you, I mean, the, the, but I, being serious though, you are truly a victim of cancel culture, and I want to be, I want to be oh, very clear. Actually, like, thank you. I don't know why, I don't know why they are, I mean, you, Hassan, I don't know why, like, all these people who, who rant and speak about freeze peach and frozen peaches all the time, like, you know, like, why is it that whenever somebody says something that they have to get all up in arms, like, why, why do they have to cry about it? Right. Who are we talking about? The Republicans? Because I get canceled just, by everyone. Just the right. <laughs> yeah, just the right. Yeah. Specifically the right. No, but they are the they are the biggest cancelers of all. Like I mean, right. the, the fact that they even get to own this conversation about um, they dominate all the conversation. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. But uh, so I actually I have I have more questions. Okay. All right. Because I'm I'm, I'm I'm I'm, ca- I'm <laughs> captivated by your story. You know, I found my story boring. <laughs> really? Yeah, because it's my story. I'm just like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Well, I mean, you have it's... one of the most unique life experiences yeah. of anyone in modern time. Yeah. Oops. You do. <laughs> 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 so let's say, so you sent your stuff to the New York Times and Washington Post. and Well, I, t- I tried to. I tried to. And as I understand it, they ignored you. They did. They were your first people you reached. Well, out was to. it that? Okay, so I want to be clear. Like, uh, it's in my book. It's actually, it's really complicated. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't I was ignored so much as it was. It was sort of a complication with sort of the discussion of how to do it safely, to how to do it securely. I see. Um, they were too. It was too hot for them. You think? No, I just think that they. I, boomers, right? Mm-hmm. You know, like, hey, like this is you're digital. About, this is digital stuff. You're talking specifically about getting data to them. Mm-hmm. Right. So okay. like, this is twenty. This is twenty ten. This is like January 2010, and these are people who like struggled to like open their email. Okay. Right. I think that's what was going on. It's just that's sort of incredible like, that they missed that. Well, that's uh, that's why they changed. That's why. I mean, one of the things that happened that is that both in 2010 and in 2013 there was sort of like an oh shit moment, like oh we need We're, to modernize our 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 our, our uh, methods and our and you know and and sort of like how we collect information, how we how we deal with this stuff. And it's actually funny because. You know, um, and I actually get, get asked this a lot. They're like, "Oh, well, you know, you, you, you One of the things they want to talk about is government secu- is government secrecy, right? And I'm just like, "Well, no, because like, that was like a 2010 issue, right? Now we have now we're so awash in information, and inf- that they're, 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 they just will publish the awful things that they're mm-hmm. doing, and it gets drowned out by misinformation and disinformation, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and people questioning like what reality is. Like, you know, that's the biggest problem now. Is sort of like sure. identifying. What is real? Because like, what should we pe- care about? Pe- I mean, people, people are living in like completely different realities, even though they're like living right next to each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, were you kind of like disillusioned by the fact you're like, I have this thing, and these the biggest papers in the world that I want to get this to are incapable of receiving it? I mean, was that frustrating? Was it shocking? 
I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, like, it, would, it would have been it would have been nice. It would have been nice to you know like have a have a Dan Ellsberg you know s you know like uh, you know meeting in a hotel room kind of thing. But you know, like, alas, this is not how things played out. You know? mm -hmm. And and uh, let's just and, say, uh, and I'm you know I'm you know, I got I got a book coming out, dude. Yeah. You're asking a lot of questions. This is book. good. This is this <laughs> publicity for the this book. This is going to get people interested to buy the book. Yeah. You to you uh, in my opinion, you talking about whatever is only get people more interested in the book. Well, but, they're going to have to buy it to get it. Um, <laughs> I don't know if it's free uh, if it's free sale yet. Oh, if know. it's this free sale. Is, I, I need to talk to my publicist and figure out. But I, I, as these as the things were being disseminated around the world yeah. and there was shock around the world. Well, I didn't know about this. You'd ha you'd I was in know. solitary confinement, and I was like in like a cage in. Oh, so you were wait for you sixty were, day for like fifty nine days. You were arrested by the time this became news. By the time this became news, I was arrested. I was oh, incarcerated, wow. and so I had you, no idea. Wow. I didn't so you really didn't even get to see that whatever whatever you were being busted for had meant anything. I didn't even know that they closed off up uh, and uh, the uh, deep deep water horizon uh, spill. That was open when you went. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't even know until months later. So that was okay. So and I'm a big I'm a big soccer fan. I love the World Cup, and the World Cup happened, and I had no idea <laughs> who played, who won, anything, no scores or anything. So it was someone you befriended snitched on you, basically. Or you um, talk about that? Yeah, I'm not gonna talk. I'm not gonna talk about that. Um, that again, there's court records and things. So like let's that. just say this. Let's skip all that, and then I'm curious. So so you get arrested, right? You have no idea that anything you did gets out to the world. Yeah. And you're put in solitary mm -hmm. confinement. What is that like? What is solitary confinement? Uh, it's boring. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, I often get asked, like, you know, what's solitary confinement like? And I'm like, well, you know, like, uh, go into your bathroom, take all this stuff out and close the door oh and then God. put a bed in there. And then that's your. Some people say that's torture. What would you say? To um, I'm careful with the word torture because, you know, for me, it has a very legal implication okay. um, mm -hmm. very what about like cruel and unusual I think I think that it is I, I think it is cruel punishment I think it is I, I think that it's, I mean, it's definitely not it's not unusual it's not valid. unusual it's yeah, very valid. it's very typical yeah. there's 60,000 people that, that deal with it every day wow. I think that it is unlaw I, I think that according to international law it is it is unlawful after 15 days I think that the practice should be banned I I, I I'm skeptical of prisons in general and I'm you know and I never thought I would have this kind of position where I would be like a skeptic of prisons. But yeah. as somebody who's been through prison and seen the system, like I just don't see the value in it. Right? It doesn't do anything. It doesn't really. It's a waste of no, money. it does. It does do something. It controls. It controls large populations. <laughs> it doesn't have anything to do with individuals. Like mm -hmm. everybody talks about, like oh well, this is about individual responsibility, right? But it's actually no. It's about collective sort of control of larger populations. That's why it's immigrant populations. And it, and this isn't even just the United States. This is like. It's like if you look at New Zealand, for instance, right? The native population in New Zealand, the native population in, in Canada are the are some of the highest, you know, have the, some of the highest incarceration rates. Mm -hmm. You know, it's people of color in the United States. Mm -hmm. It's immigrants mm -hmm. in the United States. You know, the carceral system like imprisons like people who, you know, who who like have who are in there for petty offenses and just can't pay pay their way out. Right. It's not it, the the intentionality of it is not it's not about individual responsibility it's not about crime it's not about any of these things rehabilitation it's about, it's about controlling a, an unwanted population i see that's the way i view it so you were in you were in solitary for how long i don't have the exact count off the top of my head but it was over a year i think altogether. <gasps> a year over a year what? not consecutively Shit. not oh. like, uh, consecutively what was it was 11 months 11 what months yeah and so you're in, and so this, it's the size of oh a bath, God. just a bit big enough for a bed to fit. Yeah, and then it's 59 days of that. We're in a steel cage in Kuwait. <gasps> and so, it's, do you have a bed in this steel cage? What is this? Yeah, there was a mattress. There was a mattress, and anything else but a mattress. Uh, I don't remember. I was just remember it was sandy. It was really real. There was sand <laughs> in your in your cell. Well, yeah, because it was a tent. It was a tent with a cage inside of it. What? Was it hot it was as like fuck in cage. there? Uh, the air conditioner sometimes didn't work. It was usually the ambient temperature. I would say was around 85 to 90 degrees. Just all the like time. Like Fahrenheit. That's uh, like 30, 30 to 40 degrees for your, all you Europeans out there. So it's a cage with a bed in it. Yes. And when and you say cage, there's no privacy. 
No, there's no private. Uh, I, the, the entire time that I was in solitary confinement, I was being watched uh, uh, by at least two people. Wow. What and what doing? about, like, going potty? Yeah, just go for it. That's like prison life, though, because yeah. there's, there's just, in prison, yeah. you just have a toilet. Is there there's, a toilet? Yeah, sometimes I forget to yeah. close the door before I go to the bathroom in my apartment, and whenever I have a friend over, they're like, oh, oh you're, you're, little, you're used to that. Oh, problem. darn, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Well, you kind of gloss over that, but it really seems like horrific. It's, it's I mean, it, I mean, almost a year. It is. It is the way that I. It is a coping mechanism, mm. right? You know, it's it's just like it's just like you know, like I had this thing happen to me, and like mm. you know, my brain and my body are still trying to grapple with that. And, it, and the easiest way to do that is just like is just like chug on. Did you have books or something in there? Oh yeah, I read okay. thousands of books. Wow. Okay. I, I I don't know the number, but it's at least a thousand books. Mm. Wow. Uh, I yeah I, yeah I I read a lot I I started with like classics too like American classics and like historical classics and fiction non and then like nonfiction and I would keep up with like news and newspapers and stuff I read a lot of periodicals because they were still printing things back then mm -hmm. um, and so yeah I kept up with a lot of news and information and uh, and and reading a, a, an enormous amount of fictional lit literature. Did you learn to love reading or was it just like, I've always loved reading, but right. I I actually had time to do it and yeah. uh and you know, I was able to for a while. Right. Yeah, my uh, prison is a prison was uh definitely a time of still a time of learning and growth for me personally. What what was the food like when you're in a prison a solitary cage in can Kuwait? I, can I be on so Kuwait was awful because, um, you know, it was field. It was like field stuff. It was the same Just stuff we had in Iraq. Military um, food, yeah. Uh, uh, Quantico, where I was at for a period of time, for where I was there for nine months, was a Marine Corps base. Uh, best food I've ever had. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Prison food? <laughs> uh, so the weirdest, it's actually a weird fact because uh, their, op their officer candidate school was right across the street. So it was like where the, all the officers become and, and become and they're sort you of cafeteria. You shared a cafeteria. We, we share the diet, the oh, food. So it was like wow. fantastic. Food. Oh, <laughs> like, that's so we, interesting. Like, like okay, like it wasn't the best food I've ever had, but like the consistency of it being so good, just mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's like it's like having a it's like it's like having a three star restaurant food like every day. You're wow. Just like, wow. But uh, but yeah, then the, and then uh, the you know U.S. disciplinary barracks in Kansas um, and the the. You know, so prison system. The rest of the prison system was pretty typical, um, Sodexo type stuff. Your 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 uh, your standard, uh, um, you know, slop on a tray. Um, Got it. Macaroni and cheese, and maybe 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 you know maybe chicken wings here and there. Like I've, I'm I've, I'm trying to eat more plant plant based, but I I have I have a really soft spot for for buffalo the, wings. The chicken wings. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who wings doesn't? Who huge. doesn't? It's a huge soft So spot. coming out of solitary for close to a year, was it shocking for you? Yes. To get absolutely. out of that? I needed a recovery period. Oh um, my God. It took me months to be able to interact with people again. Because you didn't talk to anyone during that time, I would imagine. or uh, Yeah. So the pr I, I, I did interact with prison guards, um, but it was mostly just like deliver food, uh, take Brief. legal appointments. I, yeah. inter interact I started to interact more and more with lawyers at the time because mm -hmm. we were obviously trying to collect evidence and build a case and mm -hmm. try to defend ourselves, mm -hmm. and make our case to a court martial. Um, but yeah, like my my time was fairly isolated. And so, does time like become just a complete abstract thing or? Yeah, I you know time. time uh, I've I've learned to value time. I think that one of the most important things that I've learned uh, in my life experience for now is that I care far more about time than I do about money. Mm. Like if if it's a waste of time, like if you were if you told me that I was going to get a um, hundred million dollars, uh, but it was like going to take a huge chunk of my time away, I wouldn't change. I wouldn't exchange. I would want to do what I want to do with my time. Yeah. Um, I, I I value time because you know m m like as, as as awful as our sort of you know capitalist uh, money based uh, world and structure of society is um, and sort of the rat race of things is um, I've really learned the value of of time uh, and how it it you know we are slowly dying like we're all slowly dying over time uh, and uh, and that time is valuable. And having that time taken away and then being given back to me mm -hmm. has just made me value every second so much more mm -hmm. 
and you know, and and I don't want to do things, and I, you know, like I I want when I when I spend time, especially with my best friend, um, you know, I, and and we just watch anime or whatever, mm -hmm. and you know, she often asks me like, why like why do you want to hang out with me and spend time with me? And I'm like, because this is what I care about. This is what I value. Mm -hmm. I value the time together. This is so important to me because I, you know, I I wouldn't give this away for anything else mm -hmm. because like we're, you know. Yeah, like, and you got a second lease on life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I really have an understanding of how precious that time is and how precious life is and how precious, you know, relationships are too. Because the relationships that I had in prison were that very and learning how to like interact with people and have meaningful relationships with people was was so important. Um and I always recommend this to people, you know, like if you know, people often ask, like, oh, you know, like what should I do about, you know, people who are in prison or whatever? And I'm like, write to them, write to mm -hmm. them, mm. pick up the phone call when they call you, mm. send them some, a little bit of money, have some interaction or, or, or be out there in the outside world. Because I've seen so many people be forgotten about in the prison system. Wow. Mm. It's, 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 it, 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 sending a letter to an inmate, especially an inmate who's been in for a, a significant chunk of time, can be a life-changing experience for them. Mm. Wow. It, it changes their entire outlook on life. Hmm. Well, wow. that's really interesting. So, what was your transition period like when you came out of solitary? Um, again, in my book. Uh, but uh, yeah, was, I really enjoyed it. Um, I enjoy, really enjoyed being able to like be outside of the prison, mm -hmm. or be be outside of or be outside of a cell. Of a time, yeah, by yourself. Um. So, uh, I started to run. Hmm. It was one of the first things that I did was I started running again. Um, it's, I was interacting with general population again. Um, it was a little slow in terms of like getting used to talking to people. This was a little private at first, uh, and then I and then you know and then I got sucked into D and D and playing playing board games and and I got you know one one of the things that 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 is an invaluable skill from being in jail is I'm really good at poker and spades. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I for some reason it surprised me just to see, think of prisoners playing D and D. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean it's an escape. It is, yeah. I mean by definition, right? Role playing game. Yeah, so you know. Um, Did you DM? Oh yeah, I, I DM. I have a couple campaigns on standby. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let me just fast forward, kind of to you were in jail for seven years, and those seven years, whatever, it comes down. Um, you know, by the way, there's, are you following a lot of the media that's happening? Because people are talking about you during that time. There's people who Not are, really my stuff, but almost certainly the rest of the world I was paying attention to. There was a lot of advocates saying I, like... I tend not to read anything about myself. Okay. It helps me. Yeah, no, I <laughs> totally understand that. Yeah. <laughs> but there was a lot of people saying like, uh, she's being mistreated, she's being tortured, it's a human rights violation. There Every, was a but lot of everybody that. in that system is. Right. Mm -hmm. I guess they thought that what was happening to you was particularly well um, because yeah, I, it was... I would say that the the solitary confinement in Quantico and in um and in Kuwait were documentedly like inhumane were found to be like by by third parties and, and outside sources including the United Nations to be you know to, to be improper mm -hmm. um now the rest of my confinement you know um was no different than most of I guess of they inmates. thought that it was just making like an example out of you uh, overly. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I mean, I speculate a little bit on in my book. There we go again. It's going <laughs> to, dude, w when that comes out, we're going to promote it. We're going to sell so many of those books. Yeah. I promise. Yeah. Well, yeah. if it ever comes out. If, if, it, ever if it ever comes, comes out. Because <laughs> I've, I've, I've gone on TV and talked about it before already. So. Well, you know. When you first, when your trial came up, one of the charges against you was um, aiding, uh, aiding the, enemy. the enemy, which carries a death sentence. Yeah, well, uh, I'm guessing that they decided not to go with the death sentence because they went with life. They went for what they they shot for life without parole. Yeah, which was which you know is I mean how that differs in my mind space to 35 years is mentally. What's the it's, difference? What's what the difference? But um, in, in terms of like your ability to access parole and or early release, things like that, um, it has a significant difference. Um, but yeah, they really they really harped on that. Um, and it's it was a scary. Was it, it, scary? it would have been a scary yeah. precedent. It would have been a scary precedent for a lot. Just of Just to kill a whistleblower. I mean, no, no, not even that. Because it, like uh, aiding the enemy is just strange 
in the military system because it's the one offense that you don't have to be in the military to be charged with by the military. Interesting. A Just civilian can be charged for that? Yes. Interesting. Yeah, the military can come in and, and grab you with that. But it's typically you'll reserve for wartime. So I, I'm, not, I'm not a lawyer in this area. It's really complicated. There are a lot of people really scared about it. Um, and the ACLU and a bunch of other, like, n uh, a bunch of news organizations were, like, super nervous about it. Um, it didn't pan out. I got acquitted. Like, of that one charge. I got acquitted of that. Because so. you were charged for like 21 things, found guilty on yeah, 17 I mean, or something like that. Yeah, it's just like yeah. whatever. But yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, like I Were I, you scared I of that charge though? It must have been terrifying to be facing that down in the beginning. Nah, I mean like I, I think I think it was just like, well, whatever comes, comes. You know, And I had this mindset the whole yeah. time. Which was yeah. like, you know, I I am willing to accept responsibility. I I I know when I, I you know I like I I made a decision you know did I understand the consequences uh, oh God no hmm. nobody had ever gone to prison for this before interesting right nobody had ever gone to jail for a significant nobody ever like my my entire life experience was completely unexpected with this hmm. um didn't you know didn't I, I expected to lose my job lose my security clearance hmm. face some you kind didn't of expect it would be such a big deal no I did not I did not fully grasp how far that they would go or how significant this would be um, but did you know what you were doing was significant would be significant for the world i i you know I, honestly i i was i was a little I, I was going through a bit of a dark period where i was just like and especially after the new york times and washington post struggling with them i was i was like is anybody gonna care you were like is this does this even matter do people even care yeah i can mm -hmm. totally get that yeah I and mean, if two biggest papers are like mm, we can't do this so you're like well Maybe it's not that interesting. And I, and I see this every day. Right. And I see this hor this this horror playing out in b b my with my own two eyes and in the the sort of this I understand the statistics and I know what's going on, mm -hmm. you know, with with the 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 data of what's going on and the reporting and everything else. So I understand the stuff fully and it's just like how how is this like 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 how like how can how can I how can I how can I share this with people? How can I get mm -hmm. people to understand? Mm -hmm. The gravity of this, and I was very worried that, and and I still to this day, like there's a darker part of me that that often wonders, like how much people really seem to care about awful things happening in the world. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, like seeing seeing the last decade sort of pan out here in the U.S. and, and after COVID, and seeing, you know, the, pa the sort of people not caring about the pandemic and things like that is is really alarming for me. You know, just sort of the callousness and the carelessness mm. Mm. Um, that is. That you know, because like you know, uh, when we're presented with the truth and we're, we're we're presented with evidence of of something happening, you know, our our propensity to to ignore that or to pretend it away or to argue it away is is quite frightening, quite disturbing, mm -hmm. and uh, and 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 that that that's been a consistent sort of sense or a feeling that I've had, which is you know, like, do people care? Mm -hmm. I think people care. I care. I think people do care. I think part of the problem today is that the propaganda machines have yeah. become so effective that people just don't know they don't they know it's real they can't accept it as real because yeah. they there's like a whole propaganda machine on the right that's saying this shit's this is all bullshit and then you go and you don't want to believe it right it's it's a difficult truth yeah to say yo my government killed two hundred thousand people in iraq and so it's much easier to be like oh Tucker, they deserved it yeah tucker's <laughs> telling me the truth it's all bullshit that's a relief you know yeah they don't have to care about it so I think there's just this really powerful propaganda machine that. But it's not just the right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know the center, la the, the you know the, the the centrists, the Democrats. You know the, like this is this is a by. Yeah. The, 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 the thing that scares me the most is whenever whenever there's bipartisanship in Congress because mm -hmm. it's usually that they're bipartisan not for a good reason, right? right? <laughs> it's usually over something really scary and that people are just gonna like look the other way, mm -hmm. like you know like we're gonna like give. We're gonna give uh, we're we're gonna give local police forces like stinger missiles or something. <laughs> right, right, you know? right, 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 right. <laughs> just like, yeah, just like, they... just, and then you look at the votes and it's just like 435. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> you're just like it's just you know, members of Congress and and you know like set like nine like 96 senators. You know, it's just it's it's always alarming to me. Like bar bipartisanship that's true. Scare, is scary to me often. Yeah, that's... because it's usually some of the worst things are bipartisan. Patriot Act, perfect example. Yeah. yeah. Pure bipartisanship. Yeah, it's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. 
Was there ever a point where you regretted doing what you did? You're like, this was not worth it. You know, I mean, I, I just couldn't play out any way, other way. Like, I one of the things that one of the things that gets me is that I, I don't replay the stuff. I don't, you know, I, I I live in the moment and I and I and I live thinking of of the future. I don't I don't try to I don't try to I don't try to relive stuff or relitigate stuff or 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 because like what happened happened mm -hmm. and I can't change that and. Uh, you know, and you know, I, I guess some people they wanna they wanna sort of like question or 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 or, or think of different things, and it was just like it, it was just that my experience, and I I go through again, this is in the book, you know, the, but that that experience like played out in such a in such a meandering, freak of nature way, like, mm -hmm. you know, in a, such in such a freak of circumstances way, um, that uh, I. You know, both both good and bad. Like I just I don't. You know, it was like a, it's like like a statistical error margin mm -hmm. of like probabilities that right. this set of events could have happened in this particular way. Right. And any little thing could have. Uh, and if anything had changed in any at any and at any particular point, you know, if I if I decided to go um, uh, take up a, a certain offer and go to a different position, mm. um, I wouldn't have been there. Right. Um, if the if our unit hadn't been deployed redeployed from Afghanistan to Iraq. You know, whoop, you know, well, you know, history would have played out very differently. Mm -hmm. uh, and my role would have been very differently. I mean, I had to be in a sp specific office in a specific, uh, in a specific time frame. It, it had specific access to things and then have a specific, like, you know, like everything was just extremely, mm -hmm. extremely specific. So I don't try to, I, I don't try to rehash those decisions because I'm like, I had, I made all the decisions that I could do with the information that I had available to me at the time and the options that he had available to me at the time mm -hmm. and well, I, what, what more what more can you do um it is pretty incredible though i think even throughout it you did have a lot of even though there was a lot of like hate for you there within like certain political i haven't really encountered a lot but there was a lot of really a lot of support like i think you must have had some really good lawyers that came to your defense right pro like and i mean you sure you know i have yeah. i have lawyers but i mean they cost me money you can't did do, you have to you pay can't them? do a pro you cannot do a, a scale you cannot do a case with a scale pro bono. but then how do you pay how do you for pay? a case that big because that that from what i understand what cost well we raised dollars. money my family mm -hmm. raised money um mm -hmm. you know i i I, I certainly have debts that I, I still. You have still to owe them. Well, I mean, like I, some, but like it's we have a payment plan, so it's like mm -hmm. not a big deal. Right, there was a big campaign it's, to raise money for you to pay the lawyers. It's, man right? it's managed. Yeah, it's, it's not, managed. It's not. It's, it's not an issue for it's you. Not an issue for me. Wow, mm -hmm. but that's pretty incredible. It is incredible though, throughout everything, that you're able to, you know, be free and be living your life. Yeah. Through, after all of that, I mean, it is pretty incredible. Yeah, I'm living a pretty fun life now. You know? Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, we were in lockdowns and 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 I wasn't traveling for a bit, but you know, I've, I've I've been in Europe. I'm here in L.A. I mean, all the oh, I gotta and like being able not to, a fan of the city LA? of L.A. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. It's, it's love hate. It's not yeah. a great city to visit. I'm an East Coaster through and through. Yeah. I know I grew up in the Midwest, but I I I I I love New York. I, I've fallen in love with. If it. you're a New Yorker, LA is the worst city. I I can you know see what I mean? that because like it's the antithesis. Of, it's of yeah. Europe. We have we at least have some modicum of public transportation. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> nothing here. Yeah. So everything is so spread out here. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, awful. a thirty minute drive is short. Like mm -hmm. it takes us thirty to forty minutes on a good yeah. day here, and we live like seven miles away. Yeah, uh, yeah, seven miles away is like to JFK in New York. That's like all the way out there. <laughs> oh, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so basically, the big, the big change came for you when uh, President Obama decided, after everything, to commute your sentence. Why do you think he did that? You know, I he, he said what he said, so. I mean, what did he, he say? He uh, he said that he felt that the sentence was was too much. That um, you know I had served my time, mm. and uh, you know I I had gone through the process and gone through the the, the court system, um, and uh, and you know and asked for a commutation, which I did. Um, I asked for you petitioned for that. I petitioned well, the public petitioned publicly for time served. We petitioned for ten years, which is what we were able to do within our within on our end. So we 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 wanted a reduction of sentence from thirty five years to ten years, I which see. would have made me in the range of eligibility for parole at that time. 
Um, but and, must, uh, did it feel like a long shot when you were asking for commutation? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Like, um, actually, you know, I, 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 I talk about this again in my book, but like we had, we sort of had reasons for why we were doing it, but they were like to, to improve my quality of life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, to really, you know, just sort of draw attention to some issues and, and raise some long-term long health issues and, and, you know, healthcare issues with being trans and whatnot and really drive home the sort of message like, you know, like, you know, it's, it's time to start, it's time to start, you know, taking care of some of these things, mm -hmm. especially if I'm going to be in prison for, you know, another 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and yeah, uh, I, uh, I, we, we, we had no expectations walking into this. Yeah, yeah. Like, we were, you know, uh, it, we figured it was a long shot and it was actually, uh, honestly, I mean, this is a bold decision from Obama. Because mm -hmm. he's the one that, that he was the it's president like the when you got decision. sentenced, right? Yes. So Because if you think about it, because I, I've had time to think about this. Um, you know, this was the last decision that he made as president. as like one of the well, largest. That's a big thing. Yeah, it's a legacy. Put a cap on his presidency. Sort of legacy defining decision, you know, being a cap and a sort of legacy, legacy defining decision. And, you know, and one of those was to give me a chance. And that's that. That's a bull. And and also not only that, but like this isn't like oh we're commuting a forty year sentence to a thirty year sentence, right? It was, you know? yeah. It, this is like this is like no, we are taking four fifths of your sentence and slashing it, mm -hmm. which is a big deal. I mean, I or five is five sevenths is what, what I think it is. Um, and yeah, it's a big deal. It's crazy to think that probably n almost any other president probably. Would not have done that. Yeah, and yeah, the, the, that's the thing. It's like I, I think that it was a it was a bold and risky. It was a it was a bold and risky decision that you know sort of uh, whatever I do for the rest of my life is going to be tied to his decision. Mm -hmm. so yeah, it was a, it was a bold decision, and, and I'm and I'm very aware of that. I'm very aware of sort of the the risk that he. So, took. how do you feel about uh, President Obama? You know, I, I think I think he tried. I think he tried. I think he was a president who didn't understand the reality of the moment that he was in um he wanted to reach across the aisle he wanted you know like uh, health w w you know getting health care was like the capstone of his entire legacy and he didn't get anything else done mm -hmm. um he's mostly spent the the presidency like treading water and whatnot and sort of um one of the reasons for that and then the only seem the only seemingly things that the only bits of his legacy that he seemed to to be able to keep were sort of carryovers from the Bush administration and sort of the solidification, the crystallization of the security apparatus, um, you know, the, the, the use of the, of, of, you know, the, the, the use of the militarization of policing in the U.S. Um, obviously, he was, uh, he became known as sort of the deporter in chief in that time. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I, I think that, I think that he, that while he personally tried, I think that the, the presidency is such a toxic office. It's such a poisonous position because it's not just a person, it's an institution. Mm -hmm. You are the executive of the executive branch of the United States. And the executive branch of the United States acts, you know, acts on behalf of the, the, of, of the sort of like ruling class in the United States and mm -hmm. the, the sort of powers that be within, you know, the moneyed interests in the, of the United States. And so does the Congress. And, and uh, I think that, um, that he being sort of this constitutional lawyer um, you know, I was trying to wrestle with this and grapple with this and, you know, and then you just had this sort of rise of power w within the reactionary right where, you know, went from like, because if, if you recall, you know, we went from like Paul Ryan being the face of the Tea Party mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to what, to like Josh Hawley and, yeah. you know, uh, and this is the sort of Marjorie Taylor Greens, like, you know, the right has been just surging so far right and just the Overton window has been, been getting pushed to, further and further to the right. And this is even occurring during his presidency. And he's responding to the, the Republicans and to his, his pro, and to his progressive base the same way that they were in the 90s, right? Mm -hmm, you know, which mm -hmm. is like, uh, progressive base, wait your turn. We'll get to these things when we get to it. And then trying to work across the aisle constantly, scrambling to, to work with and try to get concessions from Republicans. And this is this has just been the consistent, you know, like the, the Biden administration has just got a continuation of this. Yeah. So.
Yeah, you know, at, at this point, uh, at this at this point, I, I I think I think that personally he tried. I think that he that that he he made a, that he made a few that he made a few decisions as an as an individual um, in in that in that in, in that role and in that in that office. But just just sort of like the poisonness, the the poisonedness and the toxicity of the of the office, the presidency is. And, and, and I've often I I don't know if you've no, if, if if you've seen this, but I've regularly advocated for the uh, the abolishment of the presidency as a mm. as a political mm. office. I I don't think that a single person should be in this role. I don't think that an executive office should exist. I you know I I really think that that's one of like that, that's honestly like you know uh, that that's honestly one of the biggest failings I think of the Constitution is sort of structuring mm. this system in this way in which you have a sole you you have this king like you we basically we have an elected monarch. That's what we have. You know, yeah. you switch between the parties or whatnot, mm-hmm. but you you basically you, you get to pick you who who wears the crown mm-hmm. every mm-hmm. every few years and and has all the same pow- pow- powers that um, that the crown of the of that year of the like of, of the uh, 18th century had right mm-hmm. and uh, and so yeah I'm very skeptical of sort of the the ability of any of any pre- like I, I don't think I don't think you just need to elect the right president I think you the the, the problem is the office itself mm-hmm. interesting. Do you have personal feelings towards Obama as the person who commuted your sentence? Like, yeah, I, yeah, absolutely, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I, I find you correct, you know, because like uh, politically, obviously, we sort of have some disagreements and and whatnot. But I, I mean, that's a bold personal decision, and I, I can't. How can I? Yeah, that, so you like, feel he didn't. He didn't have to do that. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's a, pay, there was no penalty to pay for him not doing that. Sure, it was only a risk to him. Yeah. No benefit, really. And 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 that 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 that's significant on a personal level to me. Mm-hmm. There is a le- there is a, a level of gratitude towards him. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Personally, yeah, yeah I would yeah, think so. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. So, where were you when you f- this first broke that you uh, had effectively been that's in the book. commuted? Because you're asking vignettes for the book now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where were you the second after? Where? No. So, well, well um, I'm assuming you were, obviously you were in jail, and you... you know, I do, I do do a lot of this yeah. stuff now. I do do a lot of this stuff. You know, I am a, I'm a, I'm a security expert. I work in, in the field of AI now. Uh, I work on many projects, um, you know, uh, and I'm just getting started, you know. I'm, I'm starting to do media stuff again, um, you know, I uh, started to pivot, but... Uh, you know, it's just, uh, you know, I, I, um, you know, I, one of the things I've been trying to do for like the last few years is I've been trying to like, oh, well, what about 2010 or what about president? I'm just like, well, you know, like look around you. Like this is a pretty scary time. It's a pretty intense time. Well, let me ask you about the book then. How long have you been working on it? Uh, well, it's been since 2017. Since I got oh, wow. It. Yeah. It, and the book ends in 20, it ends in 2017. Oh, it's just about that year, you mean, or no? You mean it, it, no, no, it's a, my life story up to 2017. Okay, mm. I see, I see. And I know that you've been writing it, and right now the book is just being held for approval from the government. Is that no, what no, no? Mean? I think we've got approved. So. Oh, you're all approved. Yeah, it's approved. Now we just need to like actually publish the book. Mm. So you just, but you do have a publisher? Yeah, uh, okay. for our stress row, I can never pronounce it right. FSG. So, so this is going to be a huge national publication, I'm assuming. Yeah, I, I yeah. think so. I, yeah. I, you know, it's a, it's, yeah, it's not, it's not like Verso Press or anything. Have you ever written a book? I mean, what was that experience like for you? Oh, it was awful. Really? <laughs> Why? I, yeah, I don't recommend it for anyone. Oh, because um, I'm rehashing and reliving it was awful trauma- stuff. I, see. Yeah. I, see. I mean, honestly, like, there were three drafts that I went through and I went through and and went through and. It was li- like there were times whenever I couldn't look at the screen mm. because I would have an anxiety attack looking at the screen. Just I could write a book about writing the book. That's how <laughs> intense this process was. Mm-hmm. And I probably will. Mm. <laughs> Mostly just from reliving the trauma, not the act of actually yeah, writing. I'm probably going to have to write a book about just sort of dealing with the tr- the real with, with, with sort of developing a lot of traumas, living through a traumatic period of period of my life and then having that be taken away but also like having the traumas be taken away and then be like dragged into a world that where everything is just sort of like the a united states that is slowly crumbling and the infrastructure is collapsing mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh and 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 you know the the institutions are failing and you know it was like attempted coups and uh mm-hmm. you know um 
uh, mass, you know, mass shootings that don't lead to any sort of, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. any any kind of uh, yeah. change or anything like that. You have mass protests, the largest protest movement ever in United States history, not lead to virtually any change mm -hmm. whatsoever. Yeah, you know, it's just like it's just such a, de a debilitatingly um, exhausting time period to be a political figure and mm. to, to be somebody who cares and is passionate about activism and politics and 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 being involved in the world and be being involved in the community and uh, and and to, to carry this weight mm -hmm. of this time frame and this experience um and and yeah you know like um it's going to be it's going to be uh, it's going to take i mean i i you know i don't even i don't i don't know i don't know if i'll ever recover i, I don't know if i'll ever fully recover but I mean, it's i'm lot. i'm definitely yeah. healing i'm definitely healing. i mean i t yeah i, 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 I probably wouldn't have been so able to much. have i probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have been able to have this conversation in this way in mm -hmm. yeah with you what was it like working? I'm assuming you worked with editors and stuff like that. Yeah. Was it weird getting notes on your like personal anecdotes? Or? Oh, and they always wanted more. Oh, they they say dig deeper. Yeah, uh, which you know I did. You know I did dig deeper. Um, w w w within the confines of the law. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, uh, I mean the the government obviously got to say. Um, you know we relented on that. We 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 had uh, we went through a government approval process and. It's, but yeah, the the editorial process was brutal. Woo! Brutal. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I believe I called my editor the uh, the butcher. Oh no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that's good, right? To have a to have a brutal. Did you like your editor, or was it just like? Ugh. Uh, I mean, I hated my editor until until the book was cut, and then, <laughs> and then was like, this is good. And then I was like, I'm satisfied. With this. <laughs> I see. This is this isn't the book that I envisioned. This isn't the book that I set out to write. Interesting. Mm. Um, this isn't the book that. But it's the book that I feel comfortable with, and that I can add, that I feel comfortable with, and I can say, I can put my name on this. Mm -hmm. That was that process. So, so the book is basically just like an auto autobiography. There were times when I was like, this book sucks, and I was yeah. just throwing sheets. Of paper. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, to be fair, you were doing that with the with the information you had when the New York Times didn't want it to. So I'm sure the book is going to be amazing. Yeah, I'm I'm. You know, I'm just, I'm just eager to, I, I'm very eager to move on with my life. Yeah. And to I like understand. get on to the next stuff because like I got bigger stuff coming. So what are you working like, on what? now? Yeah. What's, what's. Your... Uh, so I'm working on right now. Uh, obviously the book is coming out. Um, I work for, uh, I work for a, a, a privacy company now. Um, oh, you so work I, like full time for them? Uh, I work. Um, or like a freelance thing? I, I'm a contractor, okay, um, yeah. but I work, I, I essentially work. Uh, I, I work part time, full time. Like a, basically, it's full time hours sometimes, and then part time hours other times. Um, so I am a contractor for a privacy company called NIM, um, which is uh, which is privacy, but uh, which is like a privacy technology, like you know Tor, mm -hmm. you know, with, mm -hmm. uh, and VPNs and things like that. It is a it is it is a forward thinking technology, and sort of looking forward uh, over the next twenty years, and sort of the the needs of, uh, of anonymization uh, and uh, encryption and securing. Things on the, on the internet. I actually came up with a very similar idea in 2016. Which is one of the reasons why they reached out to me in mm. 2016 was mm. uh, they were trying to get uh, they were trying to get my opinion on it. So I reviewed this, this white paper and I got asked to review it. And I went through and I reviewed it and I went through it. And you know I'm not trying to do like a sales pitch or anything for them uh, right now. But uh, I, this is something that I'm working on and that I sort of helped uh, help help develop and create. Um, the downside is is that you know it, it, we're we're doing cryptography and we're doing privacy based technology um, in a time whenever like everybody associates crypto with like cryptocurrency and tokens. And, yeah, it's you know. crypto in a diff completely different way. Or yeah, so it's it's more privacy. It's, it's privacy fo focused. There is a blockchain component to it, which is like the part part that makes people cringe. But I'm like, well, this is blockchain technology is like this is not NF. This is not scam NFTs. This is not. You're not. Nobody's gonna be making bit, like this isn't Bitcoin. Like nobody's gonna be hoarding a ton, tons and tons and tons of this stuff. It, it, it's simply a, a, a sort of management system, a, a way of mm -hmm. managing sort of no, nodes across the network or whatever to, to truly decentralize things. Which you know, I understand the skepticism of that because I am not a crypto bro. I am not. Mm -hmm. I am not into this stuff whatsoever. Um, so you know, like it's just trying to educate people about sort of like how 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 how, cri how cryptographic technology can work without it. Burning down the rainforest, right, uh, right. without it, uh, w without it, sort of like leading to uh, a bunch of uh, a bunch of nouveau riche, riche um, you know, uh, 
crypto bros like buying uh, uh you know big houses in the hollywood hills right right, uh, right. And, and 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 you know having cringe uh having cringe jpegs you know be, yeah. be sure it's old. <laughs> of course you know like it's it's just like you know like it's it, it, it the good news is that the crypto crash has made it easier to sort of like because it's cleared a lot of the people who are just mm. like out mm -hmm. to get rich mm -hmm. quick um out of the way and sort of be able to, to be like well actually like we I come from privacy and techno from the privacy technology space, which you know is older and is where a lot of this stuff came from. It's all these grifters who came back later to mm. try to get rich quick. So, but we well, we are sort of operating in the space where we're you know anytime we talk about cryptography or privacy, like people are just like, well, like are you talking about Bitcoin? And I'm like, <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> So are you a little bit resentful or maybe, I don't know if that's the right word, but all these people that came out and kind of just like you described, just kind of ruined crypto and the public, you know. Oh, absolutely. The public sphere. Oh, absolutely. Because like Especially you said, the, crypto somebody, synonymous with like scam. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 you know, that, and that's going to be, a, that's going to continue to be a problem. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, definitely. It's not, like the, the crypto crash, I think, has cleared a lot of people, but they're like, it's just, just going to open things up for the next uh for the next bear market, for the next quote unquote bear market. Still, Bitcoin's still at 29,000, yeah. But it, I mean, what was it at before, like 50, 60? I don't have any token assets, so I don't really Me care. neither. <laughs> I know to, we're token free. <laughs> um, well, that's great. And I know you, you were streaming on Twitch, you said, during the pandemic. I was streaming on Twitch, but I have, uh, the big thing I'm working on right now is I'm working on a YouTube series. Oh. Mm. Um, I've been working on this for one and a half years. I know that people are going to be like, I've been paying your Patreon for this. For this so thing. what's the project? Um, I, it's a first YouTube, it, it, it's a YouTube series in which I break down advanced technologies mm -hmm. and sort of discussions about them, um, the things that are topical, mm -hmm. and uh, break them down to a Bill Nye the Science Guy eighth grade level. So what's <laughs> the hold up if it's episodic? Um, well, it's episodic in the terms of like the topic. So the first video, is yeah. cryptocurrency, yeah, uh, which I am pre. I'm it may be pre cryptocurrency a post mortem uh, where I just sort of talk about the t and I get into the, the weeds of how it actually works. Yeah, yeah. Because mm -hmm. everybody's like, because I the most asked question of 2021 was what is an NFT and what is a crypt uh, oh, how does cryptocurrency right? work, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I'm asked this question so much. There's obviously a demand for this, and I looked for people to try to talk about this stuff. And everybody's talking about the market. Right. Everybody's talking about like burning down a rainforest, which all this stuff is true, but nobody's boiling it down to the most interesting part for me as a, as a technologist, which is the math. Mm -hmm. Which so, is how this, like why, why, is, why is cryptography a, a basis of this technology? Mm -hmm. And I get into that and, and sort of how that connects to science, technology. So when, when can we expect that? That sounds great. Uh, I'm, I, I've redone filming and pr pr production because I didn't like the first version. Oh, uh, I see. I, 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 I've I been was there. Like, yeah, yeah. I saw the first version. I was like, I was like, okay, I learned how not to do this, and I learned. What, <laughs> you know, I, it was a learning experience for me. Um, but yeah, so uh, we're up. Uh, we, I'm filming this weekend, in fact. Okay. Uh, in, in, in New York again. I'm back to filming. Uh, filming portions of it. So we're in the production phase. Um, uh, and mostly we're just sort of rehashing on, on stuff. So I'm, I'm thinking of that by the end of summer, but, um, I said that I said by the end of summer last summer, <laughs> but <laughs> we put a, we put a pin it. in it actually production. We put a pin in production because, uh, because COVID in late 2021, because it looked like we were coming out of it and then, uh, and then Delta hit or then yeah. Delta and then Omicron. But now it's like crazy again. Yeah. It's crazy again, but, um, I think you know. It's like, kind of see. nuts. Like everybody I know, yeah, is getting COVID. Like all my family members, all my friends, these guys. Yeah. It's like people aren't really dying, but the long mm. COVID is scary as. Fuck. Yeah, it is scary. Yeah. I mean, I I, I got when I got COVID in 2021. I got um I had I had symptoms for about two or three months. Oh, so you mm. had a little bit of long COVID. Yeah, I did. Um, it was actually funny because like when I got my when I got the third shot when I got the booster, mm -hmm. December or January of. December, January, um, all those symptoms went away. Oh wow! Oh really? And That's amazing. Away. Yeah, and then I got, and then like three months later, I got COVID again. But, uh, <laughs> really? Just I three did. months later? Oh, I did. <laughs> three months later, I got COVID again. But it was like, it, by that time, it didn't phase me. I like yeah. tested positive, and I was like, oh wow, like the rapid test, I'm, I'm positive. And then I started to feel like a little, a little under the weather, but like it didn't, it didn't really knock me out or anything like it did before. So there's one question that everyone wants to ask before we wrap this up. And it's what is your favorite anime? The people are wondering. <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Um, because really, I'm I'm actually torn a little bit. 
uh, with my animes um, because Death Note is very high up there. Death oh, Note I is pretty that. good, but I, in my opinion, I won't but say I've overrated. Yeah, I won't say overrated, but yeah. I, I, I've rewatched it recently, and I've realized that it fails the Bechtel test enormously, which as a trans woman kind of bothers me. Oh, is that where there's like the not test? enough women in it? There's or? not enough women. And it's the, really they, interesting. They only, talk yeah. about, they only talk about other men or whatever. Yeah, when there's a woman in on the scene, they only talk about other men. So it's I really wanna, interesting. I want to see, I want to see, I want to see Death Note, but like with more, mm-hmm. with more, more girl power. I want to see an anime of that variety. So Death Note's pretty high up there. Yeah, Neon Evangelion um, is pretty good. Um, you know, uh, I, I actually revisited Gundam Wing. Uh, oh wow! <laughs> uh, I revisited Gundam because I watched. That was one of the first animes that I ever saw. Um, uh, then it's, it's actually aged really well, and amazingly, it, it does not fail the Bechdel test. <laughs> so, that's good. I mean, yeah. you you have to. <laughs> that's really, the '90s. Like, what is the spe- specification of that test? Because it's not like oh, it is really. It yeah, it's actually you have to be really fucking bad to fail this test, yeah. and it's incredible how many things fail this test. How's it oh, called? Yeah. Or send me the rules, AB. Okay, it's actually really good. interesting. It's it's incredible how much media actually fails this, because when you hear this, you'll be shocked. So that's it. What about uh, One Punch Man? One Punch Man? Oh my god! <laughs> I haven't seen it. You no. gotta watch that. It's so fucked. No, I haven't good. seen it. That's probably. I'm not a weeb. You're not a weeb. Okay. I'm not a weeb, but I do watch. I do. Every everyone. I, no, my 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 best friend in the whole wide world is uh is is a weeb. She's a, a weebo. She's a diehard weeb, um, and uh, is my source of all things anime and all sorts. Of, like, and like, if I if I ask a question, she like knows it. She's like on <laughs> point, and I'm just like, oh wow. So let me recommend my favorite is Hunter Hunter. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. You've seen that one or not yet? I have seen that yet. Okay. Did you love it? Uh, I thought it was alright. Oh. Mm. You watched Sorry. the whole thing. You saw the Chimera Ant arc? I did. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Everyone's yeah. entitled. Well, I mean, like, I'm in a mecca. Okay. <laughs> yeah, a mecca. But there's no mechs in that. I know. That's what I'm. Oh, you like mecha. the mech shit? Okay. I you like the mech shit. Like you like Gundam, the Gundam, like yeah. Evangelion, like yeah. Mm. There's some mechs in One Punch. There's a little mechage there. There's a little bit, but you know, it's not like um, it's not like um, King of the Hill. I see people saying. <laughs> King of the Hill. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> great. <laughs> uh, Attack on Titan is awesome. My Attack Her- on Titan is great. Yeah, I that, like show, Attack that shows. On Titan. Let's go. That show is really good. Yeah. And then My Hero Academia is one that I really like. It's a little. It's a little. You know, uh, like, yeah. I like that show. I like it. I like it, but I wouldn't put it in. I've seen some bad anime too recently. Oh really? Yeah. I've I'm sure there's bad. a lot of that. Yeah, there's a lot of bad anime. <laughs> um, I have a I have a Crunchyroll. Okay. I've been trying to get on Crunchyroll. <laughs> Do you know what's so weird? I'm trying to sign up with Apple TV, and yeah. they're making me sign in through iTunes, and I'm like, I don't fucking know my <laughs> iTunes, and I really want to get Your on Apple Crunchyroll. ID. We tried that, didn't we? All right, I gotta, I gotta put more effort in this. Gotta find the email address. Yeah. God, you talk to me. I'm the security. So <laughs> people are saying it's your birthday. Uh, is it your birthday? My it's birthday? Your birthday. Oh, I don't know why people are saying that. <laughs> December seventeenth is my oh, birthday. Oh, that's not even close. Yeah. Oh. Couldn't be further away, actually. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. It's almost exactly six months away. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, okay, let me read this test because this is actually very interesting. So I just think I, I, I'm fascinated by you know how close we are in age, though. Are we? The, are you 36? I'm 34. Oh, I'm like oh. you. Yeah. I'm December 12, by the way, so we're very close. Why are you fascinated by how close we are in age? I don't know. Cause I'm about to be 37, so we're know, not I, even that I, I close. Because I, I look, you know, like, I, I feel closer to you than I am to Hassan. <laughs> oh, really? Because Hassan's Hassan like, younger? Kid. yeah, Hassan's, like, I'm Hassan's used, a youngie. You know what? I'm used to everyone being Hassan's younger 30. than me. He's Yeah. Mm-hmm. Young man, he looks old as fuck though. He's decrepit. Yeah, he looks. Big oh, he he hunches. He's, he's like child. <laughs> but you know what? Um, I'm used to everyone being he's younger a than summer me. Summer child. Yeah, he's a summer child. Um, so let's see. This test is a measurement of the represent representation of women in fiction. Yep. It asks whether a work features at least two women who talk to each other about something other than a man. Wow. That's it. Yep. <laughs> All that has to happen is that two women have to talk to each other about something other than a man. That the entire crazy. series so of Death much. Note fails. That's wow. crazy. <laughs> I mean, it's insane how many shows actually fail this. Yeah, I know. I like, I like just do a running, a sort of running estimate when I'm watching these things now, so I pick up on this. But So, like, when I watch it again, because, like, cause, like, I watched it when I was, like, what, like, 16 or 17? No, it was 18, because it came out in, like, 2004. 
fuck. It was came out in like 2007, right? So like I was like young when it came out. I'm actually curious how many uh, sh- shows fail or movies fail this. Is can you find oh, a list? It's enormous. Because it's like it's kind of insane when you see this. The, the basically anything from the 1990s. <laughs> uh, AB wants to say that Attack on Titan, uh, the women are badass. So there you have it. Yeah, He's there you go. I love Attack on true. Titan. True. <laughs> uh, hey, get, get, get me a list of of notable failures. Oh, here it is. The be- the Beckel. Be- Bechtel? Yep, Bechtel test. Here it is. All right, let's take a look. Hey, Jaeger, who's that babe? <laughs> <laughs> um, the list. Hey, how about you guys? Can you guys send me the link? that? But can you send me a list of, like, notable? Uh, uh, Morbius failed. Of course it did. Morbius <laughs> fails in every aspect. Fantastic <laughs> uh, Beast, The Secret of Dumbledore Not fail. surprising. When That's you have incredible. A... It's just incredible that anything could fail that. Top Gun Maverick fail. <laughs> well, I don't think there's even any women in that movie. I haven't seen it, though. Um, all right, here I got a list. 11 blockbusters that fail the Bechdel test. Let's take a look. Yo, a whole Marvel mo- Lord of the Rings trilogy? The whole trilogy? Are you serious? Uh, that's, that, but that, that's written. They went, they stuck with the book, and it's true. It's absolutely mm. true. Dude, the whole, like, 11 hours, <laughs> there's not two, oh, two women having a conversation about anything but a man. <laughs> nope. That's that nuts. That's crazy. Ratatouille? Damn you, mouse. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Slumdog Millionaire. Avatar. Really? Hated. Avatar? The Social Network. I mean, okay. Jump Street. The Avengers. The Avengers. Yep. Hmm. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. The Grand Budapest Hotel. That surprised me. That is surprising. Well, it's it's super fascinating. Yeah. I, I love this stuff. <laughs> well, on that note. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Um, we didn't fail the Bechdel test today. Uh, no. In fact, not not even close. Yeah, <laughs> not even we didn't, close. We didn't talk to to each other about just a man. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you guys mention a man? To I don't think so. I don't think mm-hmm. mm-hmm. no, uh-uh. it was this fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> so the book is coming out hopefully this year, beginning of next year. Yeah. And we are going to be standing by, very excited to read it. Yeah. Oh, so I'm be thrilled to, you know, actually do something that I've been working on for five years. And we also look forward to your YouTube series that's coming out. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Hopefully soon, right? Yes. Uh, the YouTube account is XY Chelsea. Uh, it just C forward slash. I think it's just XY Chelsea on YouTube. Is there anything on that channel currently? Or? No, there's nothing on that channel oh, okay. currently. It's okay. just, it's prepared. I, it's, it's set aside. Um, I'll publish it and I'll post it. I have a Patreon. I have a Patreon. I, I'm not recommending people subscribe to the Patreon right now because, I, one, I don't really need the budget. We already have the budget for it. Um, and uh, we're going to we're gonna wait until we actually put something out before I start pitching it. Okay. Because we raised money, and we set that money aside, and that's been being used for the production project. So okay. I've been trying to send emails to people who have subscribed, and I'm just like, no, 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 we're still doing it. Like, yeah. It's still happening. Yeah. Yeah. We're just... It's just like literally production problems. Um, and and is budget. there anything else you want to plug uh, before we? Oh, I have Twitter. Something. You're on Instagram. You're yeah, on Twitch. Yeah, I'm on. I'm on Twitch, uh, or I was on Twitch. I haven't tw- uh, done a Twitch stream since November of last year. Is it I next- will be tw- streaming again. Um, once uh, I probably probably towards the autumn, uh, I will be streaming again because uh, I'm way. I will, I'm really just waiting on the slowdown in terms of like my travel because I've been making up for all of the travel of the last two years, uh, last I- three years really. Um, in the last uh, three or four months, mm-hmm. you know what's crazy? I just so your tag is like X Y Chelsea, right? It is, yes. I just typed. There's like a whole documentary. There's so much media. There was a documentary, you. yeah. A Showtime documentary, X Y Chelsea. What's the X Y mean? Uh, that's just my uh, that's my chromosomes, baby. Oh, okay. Yeah. But why would they? It, that's, that's me. A, that's an interesting name for a documentary. They, I mean, they they chose it because that's my that's that's your Twitter thing. Handle. That's okay. my Twitter handle. Yeah. Okay, I got it. <laughs> But I gotta yeah. get that trademark back. It's kind of is it kind of <laughs> surreal that there's like so much media about you? There's like yeah, I don't see any of it. Documentaries. I don't see any of it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. I I highly recommend that you know one of one of the worst things that uh that that like Twitch streamers, YouTubers, uh tw- Twitter personalities do 
is they read their own stuff. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I, yeah. it will I came to the same doom, conclusion. You will doom pill. Yeah. Nobody's ever going to write the right thing. You're always going to know that it's different. Um, I'm, I, I live in hap, happily in bliss. Uh, I have, this is why I have an assistant who reads the stuff for me. Good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Beautiful. That's yeah, the way exactly. to do it. Yeah, exactly. The producer's yeah. like, yep, I got you covered, Ethan. <laughs> Well, you know, it's such a such a pleasure and honor to have you. It's great to be here. I'm Thanks a big fan. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. And thank you for sharing. You know, all those. those and you're things. a victim of cancel culture. Yes. I want you to know. Say that. it from the rooftop. <laughs> <laughs> Say it. As a free speech advocate. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Let this man go. When will I be? Let free? him go off the rails. <laughs> Let me go off the rails, please. <laughs> yeah. They'll actually. You know what's interesting? I've been canceled many times. Lost a lot of sponsors. I will say, and I guess maybe I shouldn't be saying this, but knock on wood, I didn't lose any from the bomb shit. Well, that's because you already lost them. I think, yeah. Oh, well, I mean, yeah. To be fair, I think all of them that you're, we're you're gonna in, like, leave Tucker lost. Carlson mode, where you've lost everybody, but you still have, <laughs> I you still got my pillow, baby. Still got my pillow. Yeah. <laughs> Can we get my pillow? I wonder if Mike Lindell would sponsor. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not. I need some Mike. I need some my pillow money. Yeah. Where is there a lib version of my pillow? Mm. There is, but don't don't look at it. Yeah, don't look that's at it. Please not. Don't. Really? Oh no! Now you're gonna look it up, aren't you? No, but I mean, like, no, like a super rich dude <laughs> so who's willing to pay me, no matter what I say. Oh, you, it already exists. It what does. Is, is it David Hogg's thing? What yeah, is yeah, that? Yeah, his name's David. Hogg. Oh, he made the pillow. Yeah. The lib pillow. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, he made a lib pillow. Oh God. Liberal tears pillow. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got tissues. So. All right. Ho hopefully, Hogg can. Uh, we need a Kleenex sponsor. You can take that big fat hog and sponsor me. Yeah. Right? Anyone? <laughs> hog? Thank you, folks. All right. Well, clap. listen. Womp, You're womp, going back to womp. New York soon? Yes, I am. Uh, I'm going back to New York. Uh, where? Oh, God. I don't even, This is why I have an assistant. Yeah, Run. love. Shout out. <laughs> love it. Love. Uh, I want to be able to have a job like you where I sit in one spot. Yeah. Um, which I was doing last year, um, but lately I've been on travel, and I'm going to be traveling probably until well until 2023 at this stage. So speaking um, engagements and stuff like that. A lot of speaking. I actually, I mean, my empl uh, the the project I'm working on. Uh, most of the employees work in Europe, so that mm. requires a lot of uh, transatlantic travel. Oh um, wow! Uh, and uh, um, that's the NIM project, and um, I am also, um, you know obviously doing media and filming and things like that so yep. a lot of projects up in the air yep. and then and then obviously like yeah like basically I, i'm just like co like all of these different projects that i've been working on for like mm -hmm. the last two years are are all starting to come to fruition mm -hmm. like in mm -hmm. the next six months that would be good so, like That'll the video good to get it all out dj there. stuff yeah. like my, i'm gonna start doing my first dj set the book is coming out um you know uh the the video uh, streaming, I'm gonna get back into streaming. All these different things are, mm -hmm. are sort of all happening all at once, which means that my I have no sleep schedule whatsoever. <laughs> you know, I just uh, there was one thing I wanted to ask you that I just realized yep. that I forgot to circle back to. You know, I was just really curious how your dad, having c the military man, yeah, and having done, be, you know, become who you are and what you did, what you did, was that when you guys cut off? Uh, communication, or did you talk to him after all that happened? Oh no, this is a different thing. This is a different family issue. Oh really? Yeah. So the so what was his reaction to the to the whole leaking thing? I think it's just a little denial. Mm -hmm. Oh really? Yeah, there's like a cringe interview. Like, don't look at it. Mm -hmm. Oh, your like a cringe your dad interview. did it. Like, interview. He, he like he like said he like said that it was in, that it was like impossible for me for to, to do that or something like that. Uh -huh. Oh, he thinks you're innocent. It never happened. Well, yeah, it was like, but that was like in his own. It was like we thought he told him not to, and we're, we're like, yeah, dead. Wait, you know, like we're gonna have, we're, we have a court martial coming up. Like, don't, don't go Whoa. on TV mm. and say things. So it's been a long time since you talked to him. So I guess you don't really know what's his opinion about all that. I now. don't, but you know, this is why I have my sister and why I have my aunt. So you know, like we we keep family. I don't want to get in my family. Yeah, know? my family has, like my family's off limits. Yeah, I understand. And I, you know, like, at the end of the day, like at the end of the day, you know, as much as you know, I have a falling out with you know any family member, like you know, that that is that we're still family, under, like we're still family. So mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. this, is, mm -hmm. this is it's a total like the reason why I haven't talked to my dad in a while is nothing to do with the leaks, the, the, with the leaks or the or the public stuff. It is completely internal family affairs. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. 
I thought there might be a connection there, but no, there isn't. Have it, folks. The one thing I, I wanted to ask, and uh, well, you had to leave it on that note. I know. I'm sorry. All right. Well, where yeah, were we talking move about? On to the next thing. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about. Uh, well, all your projects. Getting home. Yeah. Or getting on. Yeah. Because I gotta go. Yeah. Well, have a safe flight. Good luck with everything. I'm yeah. Very much looking forward to all the stuff you're working on. Thanks coming for out. having me. And thank uh, you. again, uh -huh. huge fan. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much, and thank you for coming I think on. You should put up and, the and don't be black pilled anymore. I'm optimistic. Well, if I can go through everything that I've gone through, and you're and you can live in, you know, you can live in Los Angeles and 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 have this and have this opportunity and have this show. Like, there's no reason for you to be doom pilled. I'm doom pilled. I mean, just seeing Tucker, just being able to see T Ted Cruz say something colossally stupid as we need one door, and yeah. people and pe him not get like. You know, I, as somebody who grew up in the Midwest, publicly, somebody, I mean, just, somebody in the, just, who grew up in the Midwest, the truth doesn't matter. All that matters is that it owns libs. That, yeah, that's black filling. Yeah, it's so depressing. By the way, if you need help with any YouTube stuff, let us know. Mm. Oh, we're we're <laughs> we're we're great. We're great. We're uh, all right. We know uh, all, the all right. I'm gonna put you in connection with my business. Yeah, my business. yeah, 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 yeah. Business, we can help you with whatever you need. All right, next. All right. <laughs> well, thanks everyone for watching. It's Friday, baby. Oh, Woo! Friday. <laughs> I hope everyone has a great weekend. We will be back on Monday, as usual. Do we have anything that next week, Dan, that we're working on? Yeah. We have a bunch of stuff. Hold on, I had to figure out where Ian's meat switches. Uh, yes, we have a big uh, week next week, but um, one of it is uh, a top secret project that... Uh, is it top secret? Well, don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's really funny. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, All right. Well, just stay tuned. It'll be next Friday's episode, though. We got, we got something really big planned for next Friday, so look forward to that, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, guys. See you on a uh, great you. weekend. All right. Thank take you. care. Ta-ta. Woo! Fuck yeah, baby. Ow, ow, ow. Your wetinates to the three. 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 Three, 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 three. Might drink some mayo while the incest on the sleep. Shredder will start barking off Raiders acting sweet. We'll do the real raw ritual with more. And each.